General Partnership for Delivery, the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, in the presence of Dr. Kenton Dashil. He's in our midst. Can we put our hands together as we receive him? Thank you, sir. We are very humbled to have you in our midst today. Next to him is the IUT Project Executive Manager in the presence of Aline Mogishu. Can we put our hands together for Aline Mogishu? Ma, you are highly welcome to Kano State to see what the youths of Kano State have been doing for the past one year. I want to acknowledge some of our dignitaries that are here present. As I call your name, please, I plead that you indicate so that we rightly give you the seats that befit your presence in our midst. So to move forward, I want to acknowledge Dr. Halima Mohammed Isa from Bayero University, Kano. I don't know if we have Dr. Halima Mohammed in our presence. Yes, I can see Dr. Please put your hands together for her. We also have Ambassador Ibrahim from the Ministry of Commerce, Kano State. Put our hands together for Ambassador Ibrahim. You are welcome, sir. We have uh, Collins A. Malgui. A-K-T-H, -A Kano. Thank you, Mr. Malgui. Put your hands together for Mr. Malgui. He's there seated. We have Mr. Ogurinde Olayinka from Honeywell. Put your hands together. He's present. Please, young guys, can we really put our hands together for this one? Yeah, they are, they, they are here to support us. And we are humbled to have them. We have Mr. Aliyu Yakubu from Amadubelo University, Zaria. Aliyu Yakubu is present. Can you put your hands together for Mr. Aliyu Yakubu? We have Shehu Suleiman. Shehu Suleiman. Put your hands together for Mr. Shehu Suleiman. You are welcome, sir. We have Mr. Ibrahim Umar from the Ministry of Education. Ibrahim Umar. You are welcome, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, receive Mr. Ibrahim Umar with an applaud. Put your hands together for Mr. Ibrahim Umar. We have uh, from Peak Initiative, Saad Dean Saad. I don't know if we have Mr. Saad Dean Saad from Peak Initiative. You are welcome, sir. Can we put our hands together for Saad Dean Saad? We have Barrister Mariam Jibril. Barista Mariam Jibril, yeah, Barista Mariam Jibril. Can we put our hands together for Barista Mariam Jibril? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I will, at this point in time, wish to let you know that the IUT Connect for Kano State is organized so that we extend and establish all the necessary connections and establish structures that will better present young entrepreneurs in Kano State to the agribusiness space as well for them to succeed. All that will be done today is to strategically put us young men and women of Kano State in a position to succeed. So I encourage you to maximize this opportunity. I encourage you to make the connections, the people you need will be present in this venue today. So you make good use of this opportunity. And I assure you, at the end, we will all have a better Kano state. To take us further, I want us to be on our feet to honor Nigeria as we take the national anthem of Nigeria. So I plead with everyone in this place to be on our feet as we take the Nigeria National Anthem.
Thank you very much. We can be seated. I also want to use this opportunity to acknowledge the presence of the station head, IITA Kano, in the person of Dr. Alpha Kamara. Can we put our hands together for Dr. Alpha Kamara? Is right here with us on the high table. And at this point in time, I will plead with you to make welcome up to the podium, Dr. Alpha Kamara, for his welcome address. Thank you very much. Put your hands together until he gets to this podium. You have to keep clapping. You have to keep clapping until we have him on this podium. Yeah. Young youth in Kano, put your hands together until we have him on this podium. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, let me properly introduce myself. I'm Afayaya Kamara. I'm from Sierra Leone, and I've been in the north uh, since 2003, uh, promoting agriculture uh, among households in northern Nigeria. I would like to say that all protocols observed. I don't want to break the, the law by calling people in the wrong order. So I want to be excused for that. Um, we, most of us are aware that IIT has an office uh, in Kano responsible for all our activities in this part of the country. Uh, when I travel, for the past 20 years, I travel across Nigeria, in the particular in the north, I see a lot of changes. Population pressure with limited land. Uh, if you travel between Madobe and uh, Kiru up to Konadangora, you don't see any empty land. Where as far as Zaria, everywhere is cultivated, uh, which means uh, there's a lot of uh, intensification of, of uh, land use. Uh, we in IIT Kano, we have been having, have been uh, working with uh, partners, our development partners, state authorities, regional authorities, to help farmers to overcome several constraints in this intensifying system. But there's one thing I also observe. If you go to the villages, you see a lot of very old people engaged in farming, and a lot of youths trooping to urban centers to look for jobs. A lot of opportunities in, the, in agriculture out there. You could see the prices of goods these days. A lot of opportunities. When we talk about agriculture, people feel that it's just to go at tea land and 10 crops are uh, animal livestock. It's a value chain. We can engage people, particularly youth, along the value chain. You can be even an extension agent in the community. You can get involved in processing. The youth can get involved in marketing, market information. A lot of things uh, can be done along the value chain. For those of us youth who want to get involved with, uh, in production, they require the knowledge. You have to have the knowledge to produce uh, the crops very well so that you can get yield on those lands that are, go are being used year in and year out because of lack of space. So we at IIT, with partners, it's our duty to make sure that farmers 
youth, whoever is engaged in agriculture, get enough yield, make enough profit to support the livelihood of his or her family. That's what we have been doing. This project, before we call it Young African Work for Youth, now they call it IU, uh, it has changed for, to IU. It's targeted at youth. IIT has been championing it through the general support of MasterCard to support the youth across Nigeria to engage in farming, to engage in agriculture. You don't have to be a farmer to be an agriculturist. You can do, you can, as I said, you can get involved along the value chain. You can be a processor, you can, be a, you can realize stuff, you can do anything uh, along the value chain. Those who want to do into production, we give them the support, we give them the training. We don't want youth to be idling around looking for non-existing jobs. Our culture has a big potential for youth to be engaged in. The project started over a, over a year ago, if I can remember, because I was involved in the design of this proposal for the youth, and they started, and for what I see, uh, the youth managing it here in Kano are very much engaged. We are in the same compound, engaged there every day. I see that uh, they do a lot of work. Even organizing this conference has been solely their responsibility. I want to, on behalf of IIT and my colleagues in, in Kano, welcome everyone to this uh, conference to deliberate on issues uh, affecting youth in agriculture, agribusiness, production, uh, and we are very happy. We want you to, leave, to stay here, listen keenly, enjoy the discussions, and make input in those discussions. We will give all feedback what you feel is not working, or what you feel is working, or what can be done best for you to promote the youth. I thank everyone for coming. I'm also available throughout to listen to you people and also make my own input. Thank you very much. All right, you have to keep clapping until he gets back to his seat. Thank you very much, sir. We are very, very happy. It shows that we are received from the IIT host in Kano State. He's not yet seated, and we are not yet clapping. So we have to keep clapping until he's seated. Uh, next to come up is we are going to be receiving a keynote address from the Deputy Director General, Partnership for Delivery of the International Institute of Topical Agriculture, in the person of Dr. Kenton Dashiell. Can you celebrate our father as he comes for the keynote address? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. All protocol observed. Thank you very much, Dr. Kamara, for that uh, very excellent welcome address. You have really got us up to an excellent start, and we appreciate that. And of course, we also appreciate your strong support and all of the IITA Kano Station's strong support for I youth program in Kano State. Thank you very, very much. Yes, all protocol observed, but it's important that we recognize that it is without question necessary to have the strong support of our communities, of our religious leaders, of our government leaders, and the private sector for the iYouth program to truly, to truly change the lives of the youth that are in this program. We usually call the youth in the program the beneficiaries of the program. But you are no longer the beneficiaries. You have gone through 
a series of trainings, a series of practical experiences, etc., and you have done well. And because of that, you are now referred to as I Youth Fellows. And I want to congratulate all of the I Youth Fellows here today. And let me tell you a little secret. I can tell that not all the iYouth Fellows are here at the moment. I'm sure there are more that are coming. But you that are here right now, I want to congratulate you because you are showing your seriousness and your commitment to improve yourself because you are here with us on time. Congratulate yourself for being on time. Now the rest of what I'm going to talk about in the next just few minutes is really directed to the I Youth Fellows. The future is in your hands. It is what you do, the actions that you take that will determine your future. You have received just a little bit of knowledge that is going to help you down that road of success to start your own business or to grow your own business. Please take advantage of those things you have learned. And when you find out there are knowledge gaps, things that you need to know that you don't already know, you should understand that you have the iYouth team there to support you and you also have your community there to support you, the private sector there to support you. Seek the answers to your questions from all of these special places. Yes, you will run into trouble. You will have problems. That's part of life. I just ask you to pick yourself up, solve that problem, don't get discouraged, keep moving forward. That's what life is all about. Just keep trying, never get up. Finally, you will have received some information about technologies, whether it's technology on production, or processing, or storage, transportation. This is very important. As Dr. Kamara already told us, IITA is a science-based organization. It means that the decisions that we make are based upon science. And all of those things that you've been exposed to, things about, say for example, how do you grow soybean? How do you grow maize to get the highest productivity? It comes with a lot of details details about what variety to use, where should you buy your seed, what type of fertilizers do you use, what is the date of planting, what is the spacing. All of these things are important and when you follow them to the letter, you will get the results that you expect. If the instruction is to plant the seeds five centimeters apart, and you make a mistake and you make it 10 centimeters instead of five, you won't get the results you expect. If the instructions are to use variety A and you go to the market and you find variety B, but it's a little bit cheaper than variety A, don't take variety B, take variety A. It's the way to have success and get your business going very well. You have also received information on business skills because it's not just the technologies, it is also the business. How do you manage your finances? How do you keep records so you know where you're losing money, where you're gaining money? Always 
you take this into consideration and make sure you concentrate on business skills. And you've also received information on what we call soft skills. How do you communicate with those people that you need their help? You need some help in the community so that you'll have support. How do you communicate with them so that you'll get their full support? When you employ staff to be working on your business, how do you manage them so that they'll really give you what is needed, that they will feel as if they're a full member of your team and they want you to succeed? They want your business to succeed. How do you get... Uh, other young men and women to help you in your business. I youth fellows, for you to really be successful, you must be passionate about what you are doing. You must love what you are doing. You must really be inspired that you want to succeed. So please find that subject in you that you have passion for and you want to follow and you want to be successful in that area. It's going to make it much easier for you when you face hardships. You'll find your way to succeed. There are most likely some areas where you have some special talents already, where you have some strategic advantage. If your family has land, maybe that's going to help you to start production. If you live in a place that has somehow strategically located for good marketing, maybe you, can, maybe you can move into that area. Find those areas where you have a strategic advantage. And finally, I want to assure you that this is just the start of your journey with iYouth. iYouth is still here. iYouth is here to mentor you, to coach you, to help you move forward and be successful. And we want you to be proactive. We want you to be proactive in seeking that mentorship, in seeking coaching, so that those coaches and those mentors will know you are really interested, that you are really motivated towards having great success. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, iYouth fellows, I'm looking forward to the rest of our deliberations today, and I wish all of you great success. Thank you very much. Put your hands once again together for our father. Thank you very much, sir. We are so grateful for that assurance. I also want you to put your hands together for Marlon Said, who is our special interpreter here, and is helping to make a lot of interpretation. And uh, we also have somebody who will come up to interpret what we've just heard in Hausa language. So can you help me make welcome Marlon Sanusi Nkau as you come up and just give us an interpretation of what we've heard in the local language. It's already by my left hand, so you keep clapping until you get this mic off my hand, all right. All right, yes. Jama'a, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bayane singabata, kamariya demuka saurara, daga farko an yi wa kowa barka da zuwa wannan taro da kuma fatan cewa za a yi taro lafiya a tashi lafiya amma ya dada bayani akan cewa akwai bukatar wannan taro ya nasara idan matasan da aka gayyata domin wannan taro na musamman sun mai da hankali akan abin da za a tattauna sannan yayi wa manyan baki mara ba didda cewa suna da ayyuka da yawa amma suka samu lokacin da suka ware domin halartar wannan taro mai matukar muhimmanci da farko an gabatar da mai girma falakin masarautar bici wanda yake wakiltar mai girma sarkin bici alhaji nasir adubayero 
bayan shi ya gabatar da wakilan ma'aikatan nan da aka sani mai gudanar da ayyukan noma a kasashe masu zafi wato IITA an gabatar da shugabanta Dr. Kenton Dashiel an gabatar da Dr. Kamara wadanda dukkanin su sun yi mana bayanai a takaice na irin al'amuran da suke gabatarwa da irin gudunmawar da suke bayarwa domin ganin cewa aikin gona ya bunkasa a kasar mu ta Kano da ma sauran kasashe dake rukunin zafi a duniya shi Dr. Kamara wanda shine ya fara gabatar da makala ya ba da gajiran tarihi na irin gudunmawar da hukumar sa take gabatarwa wato IITA inda ya mana kalubale na cewa yanzu an sake koma kan haraka aikin gona gadan gada domin za a ga cewa kusantun daga farkon Kano zuwa ƙarshen ta ba inda wata saura take wannan yana nuna alama na cewa mutane sun mai da hankali kan aikin gona sosai sannan yayi magana kan irin gudunmawar da suke bayarwa tun baya da kuma irin gudunmawar da suke a shirye su bayar musamman ta cikin shi wannan shiri wanda akai shekara daya ana gabatarwa yayi magana akan irin muhimmancin da matasa za su bayar da irin gudunmawar da za su bayar wanda wannan shiri dama domin matasan ake yin sa saboda haka yayi bayanin cewa hukumar IITA a shirye take dama da an san irin ayyukan da take gabatarwa to yayi maganar cewa yanzu ma a shirye take domin ta ba da gudunmawa wannan shiri ya inganta <coughs> bayan ya sauka Dr. Kenton da Shelly ya hau kuma shi ma ya dora akan abin da Dr. Kamara yayi magana akan sa na irin gudunmawa da IIT ya take bayarwa da kuma wanda za ta bayar a cikin shi wannan shiri a su matasa a koyaushe su ne gishirin rayuwa kuma suna da muhimmiyar rawa da za su taka musamman akan harakar aikin gona a shi aikin gona ba wai noma bane kadai yayi bayanin cewa bayan noma akwai kasuwancin kayan gonar akwai ma sarrafa kayan gonar a matsayin sana'o'i wadanda su wadannan matasa za su iya shiga cikin su domin ba da gudunmawa a ga cewa shi wannan shiri ya inganta ita ita a matsayin ta na hukuma da take ba da gudunmawa a aikin gona tana tarbiyantar da ko kuma a ce tana training tana horar da matasa wajen ya za su su bunkasa aikin su na gona misali wanda yake so ya noma masara ko waken soya akan koya masa tun daga shara gona zuwa zabin iri da yanda zai shuka da ma inda ya kamata ya shuka har zuwa lokacin da zai sare amfanin da ya noma sannan suna koya matasa yanda za su kasuwanci da yanda za su amfani da ilimin su da basirar su wajen sada kansu da kasuwar da za ta kawo musu riba mafi yawa na sakamakon wannan shiri ba wai ana so a koyawa matasa noman bane kadai a gona a'a kamar yanda ya bayani wannan shiri yana kokarin ya zai koyawa matasa dukkan bangaren da yake cikin harkan noma tun daga noman shi kansa da sarrafa kayan aikin gonar da kuma sai da amfanin gonar ta hanyar da ya kamata da kuma yanda za a samu ingantacciyar riba dan haka yayi kira ga matasa su ba da kyakkyawan hadin kai domin wannan shirin a shirye yake ga cewa ya taimaki matasa domin a inganta rayuwar sauran al'umma gaba daya daga ƙarshe yayi mana fatan Allah ya sa ai wannan taro lafiya a tashi lafiya ya kuma yi mana fatan cewa abin da matasan nan suka koya za su tabbaka shi lokacin da aka koma domin gudanar da wadannan ayyuka daga ƙarshe an yi kira ga matasa cewa wannan wata dama ce muhimmiya da suka samu wanda ba kowa ne ya samu wannan dama ba dan haka akwai bukatar ai kyakkyawan amfani da wannan dama wajen ganin cewa an cimma nasarar shi wannan shiri da aka kirkiri gabatar da shi daga ƙarshe kamar yanda na faɗa yayi fatan za a yi aiki da hukumar sa ta IITA domin a ga cewa wannan shiri ya ci nasara assalamu alaikum Please put your hands together for that very fluent 
and comprehensive translation. Youth, you are not putting your hands together. We need to encourage him. He's our father and he has done so fantastic. All right. Uh, also in our midst is Dr. Hafiz Mohammed. He is the SA to the Governor on Agriculture and is representing here His Excellency Dr. Nasiru Yusuf Gauna, who happens to be the Deputy Governor of Kano State, Commissioner of Agriculture. He's right there sitting on a high table. Can, ladies and gentlemen, can we put our hands together as we celebrate him? Thank you very much, sir. We are happy to have you in our midst. Um, to take us to the next um, item, at this point in time, I want us to celebrate and put our hands together as we make welcome the IU Executive Manager to receive the IU Project Vision in the person of Aline Mogishu. Put your hands together for Aline Mogishu as she comes up. A very good morning to everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Distinguished guests, allow me to stand on previously elaborated protocols and welcome you warmly to the first ever Kano chapter of I Youth Connect. Does anybody know what that means? Okay, I will quickly tell you what that means. That means a few people came together and realized that you don't stop learning and you don't start a business with a business proposal, but you start a business with a business network. And this is why, from our end, it was very important that our future CEOs and MDs, CFOs are well connected to the people who will give them opportunities, to the communities that will lift them up, and to the mentors that will give them a chance to connect to the right opportunities to the right people, to the best of takers, and above all, to finance. Because all those aspects and components are very important to start a successful business and to keep a successful business. So, before I move further, I would first like to congratulate our very able first alumni of the IYouth program. IYouth stands for Innovative Youth in Agriculture, and it's a partnership between the IITA and the MasterCard Foundation our only and ultimate goal is to create decent, fulfilling, and dignified employment for young people whom we are pouring all our hope and energy to, to ensure that they are the new custodian of our food systems. And those ones that are seated here today are here because they have joined what we call our entrepreneurship track and are able to start their own businesses which they hope that tomorrow or after tomorrow, they too will be able to employ a few more people and this is how we will beat poverty in our land. I would like to speak to the mentors in the room, dignitaries on the high table and the higher tables. It is important for a child in Africa 
to receive the support of their elders and the blessing that brings for any enterprise they undertake. And the young people who are today studying the journey toward small business or in small and medium enterprises, they cannot do that without the utmost support of their elders. So we do need you. We don't need you to flex on the policies. We don't need you to create an enabling environment. We don't need you to create an agenda that makes them to pay lower fees when they start, that allow them to have their NAFDAQ numbers, that can easily integrate them into networks of businesses that can facilitate access to loans and finance so that tomorrow they can be set up for success. That is the plea I would like to make this morning to my fellow and my elders in Kano State, those present and those that I would like to address in absentia. It is very important for the young people here to also remember that mentorship, good ideas are only possible and become greater businesses if you, create, if you get the right guidance and if you put the right procedures and processes in place. And this is going to happen only if you listen to the elders, if you follow due process and you are able to start your business in a manner that you set it up yourself for success. We believe in you and we have friends. I like to brag about my friends. IITA is built on friendships and this is why our very able <laughs> Director General Partnership and Delivery is here because we understand the importance of partnerships in everything we do. And so those partners, we like to call them friends. And those friends, we are willing to avail them to the young people here present so that they can benefit from those friendships and make and create successful businesses. In conclusion, I would like to reiterate my institution, the IITA, and I would like to convey the very goodwill from our partner, the MasterCards Foundation, whose commitment is allowing us daily to recreate a Nigeria that is food secure and prosperous for all. I would like to say that we believe in you. We believe that you are the present and you are the future, and the future that Nigeria needs to become a better place for all. We believe in the employment you will create and we will do our best to work with you to ensure that your businesses are successful. We will continue to be by your side as you move those businesses ahead. From me to my very committed team, we would like again to say congratulations. Thank you to everyone who has made this dream possible. Thank you to those that have believed in this youth by coming to this event. And thank you to all that will listen to this message and make sure they act on it. Shukran. Assalamu alaikum.
Thank you very much. Put your hands together once again for the executive manager, Alain Mogishu. Uh, so taking us forward, I want to welcome the representative of His Excel Excellency, Dr. Nasir Yusuf Gauna, in the person of Dr. Hafiz Mohammed, who is the SA to the Kano State Government on Agriculture. So put your hands together as we receive him for their goodwill message. Ah, Kano citizens, put your hands together for the government. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Aus billahi min shaitan rajim. Bismillah rahman rahim. The representative of His Royal Highness, the Emir of Biji, uh, who is happily represented by Falakim Biji, Al Haji Abba Wada Waziri, the station head of uh, IITA Kano, Dr. Kamara. Dr. Kenton Dashiell, the DDG of uh, Partnership for Delivery, uh, Ms. Allen Magushu, the Executive Manager, I Youth Protocol. The Station Manager, IITA, Alhaja Ado S. Rabo, participating youth, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I'm standing here representing His Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Kano State, who doubled as the Commissioner of Agriculture. Uh, he had wanted to be here personally, but because of other uh, engagement is not here. So, I start reading his keynote address. Goodwill message, sorry. Uh, I am highly delighted to deliver a goodwill message at this prosperous event, being innovative youth in agriculture project, I youth. Uh, IITA, through its Youth in Agricultural Office, is partnering with the MasterCard Foundation in Nigeria to implement the Innovative Youth in Agriculture, I Youth Project. The partnership aims to enable 242,724 young Nigerian women and men to build skills and secure dignified and fulfilling work opportunity in agri-food value chain over the next five years. The I Youth Project focuses on building innovative and inclusive agri-food system for young people between the ages of 15 and 35 in Kano, Kaduna, and Lagos states. The project has three components, strengthening education and training system for young people, stimulating effective labor markets, linking young people to proven agribusiness enterprises, and linking qualified youth seeking to start and grow their agribusiness to partner offering novel credit instruments geared to agriculture and youth as borrowers. Uh, an overview. Uh, in one year, the Yuawan value chains can state where rice, soybeans, groundnut, orange fledged sweet potato, horticulture, 
poultry and aquaculture. Over 1,500 youth benefited from the different training components of this uh, project, ranging from agribusiness and business development, employment skills, e-commerce, young farmers, and the Start Them Early project. Uh, that is this year. The project was implemented in the following six local government areas, selected from the three zones, two from each zone. These zones were categorized by the Kano Agricultural and Rural Development Authority, NADA, that is the extension arm of the Ministry of Agriculture. These areas selected are Garumala, Rano, Minjibur, Bichi, Igaya, and Taroni. Uh, at this juncture, I will digress a little with what uh, Aline Mogishu said regarding elder support. Uh, I'm very happy uh, the representative of His Royal Highness, the Emir of Bichi, is here. Uh, and I assured you the support monitoring and evaluation of this uh, project. Uh, six secondary schools also benefited in this, in the year one, which are Government Girls Secondary School Gaya, Fatima Mohammed Government Girls Secondary School Tarawani, Government Girls Islamic Secondary School Minjibur, Government Girls Secondary School Bichi, Government Secondary School Rano, and lastly, Sanibello Science Secondary School Dawakion Kudu. At this point, I'll also assure Alan Mogudishu that the Emir of Bichi, His Royal Highness, is an alma mater of Sanibello Science Secondary School Dawakion Kudu. The present deputy governor is an alma mater, and I am an alma mater as well. So personally, uh, we will have the support and monitoring that you have been asking of. On behalf of the executive governor of Kano State, I pray to almighty God for successful deliberation in this two-day event. I pray all participants here to have a safe and exciting, exciting journey back to their different destination. Lastly, to the youth, please, you need to have a change of mindset. Uh, work, service, sacrifice. I work first, I serve first, and I sacrifice first. Thank you. Dr. Nasr Yusuf Gawna, the Deputy Governor and Commissioner of Agriculture. Again, can you resound and a clap for him? Please put your hands together. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Uh, to take us further, we are going to be receiving our father, who is representing His Royal Highness, the Emir of Bichi, in the person of the Falaki of Bichi. Can we be on our feet as we welcome him up to the podium? Please, ladies and gentlemen, let's show respect and be on our feet as we welcome our father up. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما سليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد The IITA team represented by heavyweights the representative of the deputy governor 
who also doubles at the Commissioner for Agriculture in Kano State. The Mastercard partners of the IITA, other distinguished guests. My colleagues, the youth, you are welcome and good morning. Assalamu alaikum. Dr. Kamara was introducing himself. He said he is not from Kanu. I disagree with you, Dr. Kamara. You have been in Kanu for years. If and only if you will agree, we will give you a membership of the British Emirate Council that you become, you are a son of Beach Emirate Council. Uh, I know you very well. I know what you have done in the field of agriculture in Kano through my late cousin, the chief executive of Maina Seed, Alhaja Walla Balarabi, may his soul rest in peace. Dear IITA MasterCard and youth, What this program is saying, there should be innovative use in agriculture project. Yes, there should be. There should be youth getting into agriculture. Wealth is in the farm, it's in agriculture. And agriculture does not even only mean going to the farm to till the land. The agri value chain. You do poultry, even with them farming, do you process what is uh, the farm product, where you make oil out of groundnut, where you make uh, what you produce uh, out of maize, even producing the uh, animal feed from the stocks. So there are so many opportunities in, agri in agriculture. Do we utilize them? Unfortunately, not only the youth, even the elderly, do we utilize those opportunities? What is wrong with our land? What is happening now? For the first five or six years, there has been flood, flood all over in Africa, and Nigeria in particular, and Kano where I know more. What is happening? Do we address it? No. We don't. Every year we lose a lot. I'm a farmer. Even last week, I lost almost four hectares of rice to flood. Do we have access road to the real fa farms in deep in the rural areas? How do we go there? We ought to be uh, more innovative in terms of encouraging this youth to get into the farms. Technology. Do we have the technology? How many tractors do we have in Kano? We don't have, to, to, we are not talking of government. Government cannot do everything for us. How many tractors do we have now in Kano that are functional, that can work for two, three good hours at a stretch? How many wealthy people do we have? Why don't they invest in agriculture? Bring those technologies. People use them, you pay. What are we doing? We are still on manual agriculture. So for us to encourage this youth, we ought to have all those things in place. Government, of course, should give this youth a lot of encouragement in terms of how do they access financing. When you talk of, I hope there is a representative of NISEL here. I saw one of the reporters yesterday. There is Agri Samsung. There are so many of those uh, businesses. When you press, it doesn't open. It will, spend, it will spend one month trying. It will not open. What is happening? Are we serious?
seats. IITA can bear me witness. Do we really encourage people to use seats? People, our farmers see the cost of seats as very high. What, 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 do, they, do they know the value of those seeds? You are supposed to plant, as uh, my dear colleague said, you are supposed to plant type A. You go to the market, type B is cheaper. To buy type B, you plant. And you get less uh, products or outcome, and you complain. And are we serious? Even the seed companies, are they giving out the right seeds? Please and please. How I wish the representative of the Nigerian Seed Council is here. We ought to be serious. Some of the seeds are just mere plantable materials. Mere plantable materials. For me to plant maize during the dry season, I couldn't get any certified seed. Even at IITA, I sent somebody, they said it has finished. So, what did I do? I used what I got. I used what I got. And I lost what I lost. So, for this youth that are starting, if they start on a wrong footing, we are in trouble. They will never try again. And we, the elderly, we ought to understand that we either encourage them to become self-reliant or they rely on us. And the reliance on us may be terrible for us. I always tell my kids, my children, I don't like anybody, any of them to work in government. I worked in government. I retired as a permanent secretary. I am regretting having worked. I could have been in agriculture since. So I don't want my children to work in government. But they need the encouragement to start agri-business. You can be extremely rich in agriculture. But here, we see agriculture as a, a, a job that somebody who does not have any other means will do it. Like we do, we say in teaching. That is wrong. Agri can give you a lot of money. A lot of uh, uh, enjoyment. I enjoy going to the farm. I go to the farm virtually at least three, four times in a week. Up to now. So, what is it that we need to do? We need to encourage them, giving them all those things I enumerated above. And as I said, with flood, with we don't know the seeds, with we don't know even the fertilizer, I always ask myself, how do we apply these fertilizers? What is the kind of soil we have? What kind of fertilizer does it need? What is the formula it needs? I'm not a scientist. I'm an, I, I'm an administrator, but I know all these things because I know agriculture, I like agriculture, I practice agriculture. So without knowing the kind of fertilizer with the formula you need, you go and put anything there, and you get anything there. And in the end, you blame, no, I've been asked to go to the farm, but I'm not getting anything, I'm losing. And if you lose in the farm with the crop production, the whole of agriculture is gone. You can't rear animals without the food production. You need to feed them. You can't keep your fish because it, you need its food from the farm. So we need to encourage this youth to go into farming, into agriculture, all facets of agriculture. And as I said, when we are talking of youth employment, 
every youth will tell you, I need a job in government. Let me tell you a little story I experienced yesterday. We were sitting at the Emerald Council. At least two, three times in a week, we sit down. People come to tell us what are their problems. A youth of about 28 years came in, was brought in, said, Your Highness, I have a problem. I have gotten somebody to marry, but she said I need a job. So I come here to give you, to Your Highness, for the Emerald Council to give me the job of a cleaner. Why wouldn't that man go to the farm? And he's from a village in Beach local government. Why not encourage him to go to the farm? We are, doing, we are going to do that. But in essence, what I'm saying, our youth are only looking for a job in government. You graduate with a first class. You go to the office, you earn 40 to 50,000 per month. What will that do to you? You go to the farm, sometimes in a day you get more than that. So we need to be innovative youth. We need to discourage them from the attitude of looking for government job or company job or even IITA job in the office. Let them go to the farm. Unless IITA is going to employ them and send them to the farm as extension staff. And for government, we really need extension service. Farmers really need extension service. Government and wealthy individuals need to look into the issue of this flooding that happens perennially. People are losing. People are getting discouraged. We ought to do something. Uh, on behalf of His Highness, the Emir of Bichi, I congratulate the youth that are graduating and I congratulate the youth that are coming on board Please and please, more should come on board. IITA and MasterCard Foundation. Please and please, cover all the local governments in Kano. And specifically, cover the entire nine local governments of Beach Emirate. I will be following you up to know the number of people you have done for the state and for my Emirate in particular. Thank you very much and God bless. You have to keep clapping. You have to keep clapping until our father is seated. They have set the motion for this conference. Sir, we are very grateful. Thank you very much. So I will welcome our interpreter so that we will just um, have a full information of all the goodwill messages that we've heard. Thank you, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, the Faruko Mons or Aribani, the uh, Jagora Cheshuan Nashiri, uh, Wato Shugabakuma, Amaikatar, Hukuma, and then the Kigabat, uh, Bunchike, the Ayuka, Kasashima, Suzafi, Wato IITA Executive Director, Tokumashuan Nashiri, Mr. Allen, uh, in the Timana Bayani, Amas Ain Tanua. When the Gabat Ebayan in the Tagabatar Yana Nuna Chiwa did then the Jumagana to Zega Aziki Araiwasa. Tai Chika Kambayani, Nail Lord, the Matasa, that Staka, the Kumayenda Aki Gabatar, the Aiki Musamang Aikung Gona, Baweza Apara, the Abunda Baturi Kicho business plan bani Ah, Watus, Ali Nagabata, the Aiki. Kamarianda Tapata, do one does a para, ya Kamata Achi, a para, and either Abunda Kicho business connect. Watu kamar tatta ba juna ko tatta ba wadan da sike da alaka da dangantaka da aikin gona daga masu sayarwa zuwa masu sarrafawa domin gaba daya kamata a hada hannu saboda a ci nasarar shi wannan shiri ta kuma yi mana bayani na makasudi ko kashin bayan shi wannan shiri ko kuma abinda wannan shiri yasa a gaba wato gol kenan 
tayi magana cewa za a yi amfani da matasa ne ta hanyar aikin gona wajen ganin cewa an kawar da talauci daga kasar mu Najeriya wannan shine bayanin da ta gabatar a takaice bayan ita sai Dr Hafiz SSA wato wakili na mataimakin gwamna wanda kuma shine commissioner da ke kula da aikin gona a jihar Kano ya gabatar da bayanin sa ya kuma dora ne akan abin da aka riga aka gabatar ya yaba wa hukumar IITA wajen irin gudunmawa da take bayarwa da kuma bayani akan irin yawan matasan da shi wannan shiri ya gabatar wanda ya fadi cewa ya tintubi ko ya yi aiki da matasa sama da 2242 daga lokacin da aka fara zuwa yanzu sannan ya fadi iya shekarun da wanda da yake so ya ci gajiya shi wannan shiri ya kamata a ce yana da su wato wanda yake daga shekara 15 zuwa shekara 35 a takaice dai yayi bayanai game da shi wannan shiri ya kuma fadi garuruwa ko kuma kananan hukumomi da ake gabatar da wannan shiri wanda wadannan kananan hukumomi sun hada da garin malan rano mun jibir bici gaya da kuma tarauni bayan shi akwai makarantu wadanda ya lissafa wadanda suka ci gajiyar shi wannan shiri wanda wadansu daga cikin wadannan makarantun sun hada da makarantun mata da kuma makarantun maza yayi magana musamman akan makarantar koyon aikin kimiya wato science secondary school da wakin kudu wanda ya bada bayanin cewa mai girma sarkin bici tsohon dalibi ne na ita wannan makaranta kamar yadda mai girma commissioner da ke kula da aikin gona shi ma tsohon dalibi ne na wannan makaranta sannan shi kansa wakilin commissioner yayi bayanin cewa tsohon dalibi ne to wannan sai ta sa na ji nauyin ni ma in ce tsohon dalibi ne na ita wannan makaranta don haka tallafawar da aka yi mata ba an yi bane bisa wani san rai ko wani abu makamancin wannan domin su wadanda suke gabatar da wannan shiri suna ganin ta cancanta to wadannan su ne irin bayanan da ya gabatar sannan yayi kira ga su masu gabatar da wannan shiri a sake zage dantse domin a hada hannu a ga cewa wannan shiri ya kai ga nasara daga ƙarshe a madadin commissioner ya yi wannan shiri fatan alhairi da kuma fatan cin nasara to bayan shi mai girma falakin bici wanda yake wakirtar sarkin bici wato alhaji abba da waziri ya hau kan bayani inda ya fara da yi wa mutane sallama da fatan alkhairi sannan ya yi dogon bayani wanda ya nuna cewa shi kansa ya san muhimmancin aikin gona domin yana yi yana kuma sani ko yana da masaniya ta irin kalubalan da ke cikin aikin gona wanda ya ba da shawara cewa idan an yi amfani da matasa da kuma sani na iyayen matasan za a yi maganin wadannan irin matsaloli da ke fuskantar aikin gona daga cikin matsalolin yayi maganar uh, matsalar iri da matsaloli da ake samu na na rashin sauki a wajen neman bashi da maganar kudi musamman idan an zo kan aikin gona uh, yayi maganar karanci na kayan noma musamman injina domin yanzu an wuce matsayin da za a rika yin noma kamar yanda kakannin mu suka rika yi yayi kalubale ga masu hali da ke jihar Kano domin karancin gudunmawa da suke bayarwa wajen aikin gona domin ya bada misali da tantan da irin aikin da za ta rika yi to amma an ka duba za ka ga cewa a jihar Kano muna da karancin tantan kuma babu bukatar a ce lalle sai an saurari gwamnati sannan yayi maganar ambaliya wadda kusan tana daga cikin babban matsalar da ke damun jihar Kano musamman da kuma ma Najeriya gaba daya shi kansa yayi mana bayanin cewa ya rasa wata gonar sa wadda kusan hekta 4 zuwa 5 ta shinkafa a sakamakon ambaliyan nan ta ruwa da aka samu wajen magana iri yayi mana dogon bayani inda yayi kalubale da cewa ya so a ce hukumar nan da ke tantance iri wato national seed council suna nan domin su ji irin kalubalan da manoma suke fama da shi wajen harkar iri uh, dole mun sani cewa akwai bambanci tsakanin iri da kuma abinci kwaya da ake amfani da ita ta abinci kenan to amma mafi yawanci manoman mu ba wai iri suke shukawa ba 
ana shuka da abin da aka samu ne kuma kamar yanda ake fade a da Hausa ko kuma da Turanci garbage in garbage out abin da ka shuka shi zaka girba wanda ya fi ka moral iri dole zai fi ka samun amfani mai yawa kuma mun sani akwai sarƙaƙiya ba kadan ba da kalubale da manoma suke fuskanta wajen harkar iri ba komai ake kira iri ba akwai abin da kawai abun shukawa ne kaman yanda mai girma ya fada plantable material abu ne kawai wanda za a shuka amma shi iri mun san yana da tsada dole ne ya tsada kamar yanda ya fada saboda ba wai abinci bane iri abun shukawa ne ta tace wanda zai ba da amfani mai yawa to yayi mana dogon bayani a matsayin sa na bayan uban kasa a matsayin sa na manomi wanda ya san aikin gona daga ƙarshe ya sa kalubale ga masu gabatar da wannan shiri domin yayi alƙawarin zai rika bibiya ya ga irin aikin da suke yi ya kuma yi kira a gare su da su fadada domin wannan shiri ya tadda jama'a ko al'umma masu yawa ya ba mu takaitaccen labari na matashin da yazo yana kokawa ga masarautar bici cewa ya samu matar aure amma ta ce sai ya zama yana da sana'a to kuma a matsayin su na iyayen kasa sun ba da shawarar ga babban sana'a wadda ita ce ta noma noma babban sana'a ce amma ya kamata kamar yanda ya kira a gare mu mu dauki noma a matsayin sana'a ta riba ba wai abin na ga da na taso na ga ana yi a gidan mu ba yanzu matsayin noma ya wuce wannan kamar yanda uban kasa falakin masarautar bici ya fada daga ƙarshe yayi mana fatan alheri da fatan cewa za a yi taro lafiya a gama lafiya a matsayin sako daga mai girma sarkin bici alhaji nasir ado bayro assalamu alaikum sir please put your hands together for him you know i thought i was hearing how sound you have started hearing a new dimension of it <laughs> so once again please appreciate that translation please ladies and gentlemen okay to take us forward we want to welcome the kaduna state uh, the kano state coordinator for the innovative youth in agriculture for the kano state year one update in the person of mr nathaniel malgui put your hands together as he comes to give us that update Good morning everybody. Permit me to stand on the existing protocol. Uh, as we have been hearing from our fathers and our mentors here seated uh, a brief of what happened in IUT in the year one. Um, we look at agriculture and discovered that there are different areas that the youth will pick interest into it. So we focused in year one on four different components, uh, majorly agribusiness track, those that will want to establish their own business, and then employment track, those that will want to secure a dignified job in the agri-food sector, and also young farmers, those that will want to go into co-production of agricultural commodities. Then finally, we look at the uh, future generation, that is those that are still in secondary school uh, under the project Start Them Early project. So as we have had earlier, we have selected several commodities ranging from rice value chain granite value chains, soybeans value chain, poultry, the value chain too, aquaculture, horticulture, and horticultural value chains. So uh, we have had severally the local government we picked from the three zones uh, that were categorized by Ag Kano State Agricultural Development Authority. So we picked two local governments from each of the three zones making six local governments where we have zone one. From zone one, we have Rano and Garumalom. From zone two, we had Bichi and Minjibul. Zone three, we worked in Gaya and Taroni. 
So, um, in the course of our work, uh, in the, during the year under review, in the agribusiness track, we had the target to train uh, a quite a number of youths, close to 500. Uh, we targeted 480, but we trained 519. Uh, I think we deserve an applause for that. Uh, it shows that most of the youth want to start their own business. Nobody wants to answer, yes, sir. Yes, sir. But everybody wants to be the boss. Secondly, under the employment track, we also targeted 480, but we end up training 235. That shows that truly people want to be masters of themselves. Then under the young farmers, we train 215. In the secondary schools that we targeted six, we train 605. So all in all, in year one, we train 1,574 under these four key components. Um, I know everybody will be asking her, it was successful for you to get these results. Definitely, we will say it was successful, but without no ch uh, um, challenges here and there. Most of the challenges faced uh, ranges from the pandemic, COVID-19 restriction on the number of people who can gather at a time to train them. Then secondly, uh, getting technical host. Hence, the need for us to gather uh, key players in the agri-sectors today so that we can connect, face together, talk together, and look at the way forward. Yeah, this is the vision that we have to skill a dignified job for the youths and also most of them to be owners of their own business and others to be suppliers to bigger industries that are established here in the north and Nigeria at large. But they need a knowledge. And most of us, the key players here, we always look for experience in the people we employ. So since most of them are leaving school, where can they get that experience? Somebody need to avail himself to be the coach, to be the mentor, to be the tutor for them to learn on the job. And that is what we want to have. That is what we want to venture into. That is why we have our fathers here. We have captains of industries here, managers of financial institutions here, that we can rub mine together and plan for year two. As we have the back backup of the fed, uh, state government, backup from our royal fathers to ensure that this thing leads to success, then we also need key players in these sectors to back us, to hold us up, that we will work together. I believe we will achieve that together. Thank you so much. Put your hands together for Mr. Nathaniel Magui for that uh, very brief update on Kano State. Now we will take a goodwill message from the country head Nigeria, MasterCard Foundation, from Ms. Chidima Lawasin. Hello, good morning. I'm the country head Nigeria for MasterCard Foundation. I'm welcoming you all to this iYouth annual conference being organized by IITA. IITA is in partnership with the MasterCard Foundation under our Young Africa Work Strategy. A little bit about MasterCard Foundation. We were founded in 2006 uh, by a gift from MasterCard, the corporate, but they ha we have different boards, different governance issues. We're really two different organizations. Um, and, mo and most of our activities are focused on capacities to learn, 
we create environments where everyone can learn and prosper. The prosper aspect is financial inclusion. So um, we operate in Canada, focusing on indigenous persons. And then we also operate under our Young Africa Work Strategy in seven countries. The strategy is to ensure that youth aged 15 to 35, just like you all, um, especially young women, 70% young women, would have access to dignified and fulfilling work. So it might be paid employment, it might be entrepreneurship. So we're in Kenya, in Rwanda, in Uganda, in Ethiopia, in Ghana, in Senegal, and in Nigeria. And each country chooses the areas where they would focus. For us in Nigeria, our target is to ensure that by 2030, 10 million Nigerian youth would have that dignified and fulfilling work. So we are focusing 70% of our work on agriculture, which is exactly the space where you are. 20% on creative industry, so music, film industry, entertainment, um, all that. And then 10% on digital economy, although we are mindful that the digital has transversed all other um, projects and sectors. So now, why the iYouth pro project? We're implementing it with IITA so that we'll be sure that we develop the skills of young people as I said, aged between 15 to 35 years old. So IITA will prepare them for gainful employment or entrepreneurship within the agri-food um, value chain sector in Nigeria. So, and in this project, IITA, between 2020 and today, average of 6,000 young people in Kano, Kaduna, and Lagos states, they've benefited from the training from IITA. They've been trained, coached, mentored, some have seen demonstration farms, and they stop thinking of agriculture as what their grandparents did with a lot of drudgery and hoe and some old implements. There are many different aspects. There's the logistics, the haulage side in agri-food businesses. There's the manufacturing, turning the, the produce, into another processed um, food item. There's just the aggregation model where people, the fertilizer, the herbicides, the quality seeds, they are all part of agriculture. They are handheld drudgery for them. There is agri-tech, the drones that look at after orchards of, of, of farmland to ensure that coordinates of farms are being obtained. There's the research, there's the quality seeds. There's so many aspects of agri that IITA is going to expose you to. Then they will mentor you, the youth, and will support many of you who have entrepreneurial um, you know, concerns, entrepreneurial ideas, that there are startup things that can happen, and also create employment linkages. There are some platforms they will link you to so that you can put out um, your competencies there and have access to real dignified um, and fulfilling work. So this conference is to serve as a platform for networking and for em em mentoring the youth. You've been successful in many areas. How do we bring you together to see your lookalikes and see the possibilities and synergies that can happen? So this conference brings together stakeholders, partners, youth the beneficiaries. How do we ensure that this project in collaboration with MasterCard Foundation, will be successful for the next five years. It will be sustainable thereafter because um, the projects are not just to happen and at the end of it, everything goes back to, to the default mode. How can we sustain this and ensure that more youth are brought into the agricultural sector, have expanded opportunities access to markets. There are people that produce goods, they don't have anywhere to sell them. So this linkage is all of, of, under this um, innovation much. I, I wish you all of you a successful um, conference. Take, it, take the takeaways, use them to build in yourselves, and I wish you all the best in your journey. Thank you very much. Can we put our hands together for Ms. Chidi Malawasi? Yeah. 
So, um, I will welcome our interpreter to give us an interpretation of what we've just heard. Then immediately it's done, we'll get set for a tea break and uh, a session of photographs. So I'll be back to give you that direction. So put your hands together for him as he makes this brief interpretation. Assalamu alaikum. Mumpara sora rambayani daga Mr. Nathaniel when the shine jagora na shi wannan shiri a jihar Kano inda ya mana bayani cewa wannan shiri yana kula ko yana aiki da ko yana koya wa matasa noman shinkafa gyada da waken soya da maganar kiwon kaji da maganar da maganar kiwon kaji da kuma maganar tsirai wato abin da ake cewa aikin lambu kenan uh, dukkanin su kuma ba wai a shuka a rabu da su bane a a ana koya wa matasa ne tun daga lokacin da za a sa iri a ƙasa har zuwa lokacin da za a sayar a samu riba uh, yayi magana cewa an zabi kananan hukumomi ne guda shida kamar yanda suka gabata a bayanai na baya kuma zabin yana da alaka ne da shiyoyi guda uku wanda hukumar nan ta aikin gona da raye karkara ta jihar Kano wato na da ta bayar an yi magana akan irin abin da suka sa a gaba ko yawan matasa da suka sa a gaba domin horarwa yayi magana cewa dangane da aikin gona sun yi niyyar horar da matasa 480 amma daga ƙarshe sai suka ga sun horar da matasa 519 wanda wannan suna kallon sa ne a matsayin babban nasara wadda take nuna cewa matasan a shirye suke domin yin aiki da wannan a uh, saban tsari sannan horo da suka bayar wajen yaya mutun zai mallaki hankalin sa ya kuma yi sana'a tasa ta kansa nan kuma sun yi niyyar za su horar da matasa 480 amma sun kare da horar da matasa 235 wanda wannan ya nuna cewa matasa kowa a shirye yake ya kula da kansa ba wai ai masa horo na yanda zai samu aikin hukuma ba uh, wannan ya nuna cewa matasa a shirye suke su tsaya da kafahuwan su sannan yayi maganar cewa sun horar da matasan manoma ko sun ba da horo akan matasan manoma wato young farmers kenan sun yi niyyar horar da matasa 215 amma sai suka kare da horar da matasa 605 wanda wannan ma babban nasara ce daga ƙarshe idan aka tara yawan matasan da suka samu horo a sakamakon wannan shiri ai ta shekarar farko da ta gabata zai kai matasa 1578 wanda wannan ba karaman nasara bace ga ita wannan shiri to amma kamar yanda ya fada dukkan nasara ba ta rasa kalubale kalubale da suka samu a ita wannan shekara da ta gabata kusan guda biyu ne daga bayanan da yayi na farko dai akwai maganar cutar covid 19 wadda take da alaka da iya yawan mutanen da za a iya tarawa idan an zo taro wannan ya rage musu karsashi domin abin da suka yi niyya ya wuce abin da ya gabatar to bayan matsala ta covid 19 sai kuma babban matsala da suka kula da ita shine ta hada masana wato kwararru wadanda suke da alaka da aikin gona wannan sun kula ya ba su matsala ba kadan ba wanda a sakamakon maganta wannan matsala ne suka tara taron da muke gabatarwa yau wanda aka tara masana da masu kula da harka kudi da kuma wadanda suke kwararru a harka ba da shawarwarin yanda aikin gona zai ci gaba domin suna ganin wannan zai zama daya daga cikin matakin nasara musamman a shekara ta biyu da zamu shiga daga ƙarshe yayi wa kowa fatan alkhairi da kuma fatan cewa zamu gama shi wannan taro lafiya to bayan shi sai muka saurari bayani daga shugabar kamfanin Mastercard wato Miss Chidum Malawansan wadda ta fara da yiwa masu halartar taro maraba da kuma gabatar da irin ayyukan da wannan kamfani yake gabatarwa ta yi maganar kasashe da ake gabatar da irin wadannan ayyuka wanda suka hada da Ghana da Rwanda da Kenya da Nigeria da sauran kasashe guda biyu ta yi maganar cewa daga cikin kudi da ake bayarwa domin gabatar da wannan aiki kaso 70 an ware shi ne domin gabatar da ayyukan gona 
kaso ashirin domin masu harkar sadarwa wato ta maganar film kenan da kuma maganar masu kada kade sannan kashi goma an ware shi ne domin na urar sadarwa ta zamani abinda ake cewa digital economy kenan a ta yi maganar cewa sun shigar da wannan aiki ne ko suna kokarin shigar da wannan aiki ne ta wurin hukumar IITA wato hukumar da ke bincike da gabatar da aikin gona a kasashe masu zafi domin suna da kyakkyawan zaton cewa IITA ta kware wajen gabatar da irin wadannan ayyuka kuma tana da wani gwadabe wanda za a iya dorawa akai domin aikin ya cimma nasara sannan tunda matasa su ne abinda aka sa a gaba wannan hukuma ta san cewa ba karamin gudunmawa hukumar IITA take gabatarwa ba tana kuma da matasa wanda suke zarata wanda suke a shirye domin gabatar da irin wadannan ayyuka ta yi magana cewa ana san ai aiki a tsakanin jihar Kano da jihar Kaduna da matasa guda 600 wanda shine abinda ake san a fara daga shekarar nan da zamu fara to ta ba da shawara ko kuma ta yi magana cewa wannan taro da ake gabatarwa yau wanda ya hada da masana da wadanda za su ci gajiya shi wannan shiri ya zama matakin farko na nasara ta shi wannan shiri daga ƙarshe ta yi mana fatan alkhairi da kuma fatan cewa shi wannan shiri koda bayan shekara 5 din ta wuce zai dore dukkan matashin da aka horar da shi to shi ma ya zama ya horar da wani domin dorewar shi wannan shiri wannan shine bayanan da ta gabatar assalamu alaikum My name is Osho Benjamin Odisri. I am the CEO of Farmwin Agri Service Nigeria. I studied economics in Federal University Dusema. You are welcome to my community, Masara Awa in Bichi local government, Kano State. So in farming, what I do is, I, I do uh, commodity trade, commodity trade such as cereals and sugar, uh, sugums and all that, agricultural commodity to be precise. So we have uh, customers from Lagos, customers from, from Delta State uh, and, and Onitsha that have uh, make purchase from us. We also serve, uh, also serve as an aggregator for companies, companies uh that that want tomato a large quantity also off takers that want some crops tomato onion uh, maize for making of conflicts and the others in large quantity these companies don't have access to farmers but farming we have access to farmers we have network of farmers all over Kano State. for me to really begin as a company it began with the project uh, that is the Young African Work IIT project where we were told about the importance of you know having a business registered. There was a section that talked about life skill and all that the people that came motivated us so much setting goals and all that. So they talked so much about opportunities that come and the only way you can harness them is by having a registered business. So this thing really uh, make me to have a second thought uh, since the very first day that I attended lecture I was inspired that I have to start up a company and make this business to be very formal as we can see now. The way we go about it is we, we kind of um, crowdfund Okay, we crowdfund and we come together, investors bring out their phone. When, during the harvest time, when these things are cheap, we got them and then we sell when they are, the prices have appreciated. We tested him with little capital and he lived up to expectation. And uh, we discovered that 
if he was faithful in that which was small, it would not be a problem investing bigger fund into his business. So when he told us he has come up with a, a registered business farm wing, we knew it was the right thing and the right direction to go. come in and we admit such person to be an investor with farming, we actually drafted a document that we called that I called investment agreement. The investment agreement was actually one of those things that we learned through the Young Africa Work IITA project that we were able to that I was able to learn learn such uh, this it has really given credence to what we do because it have really made so many people to develop their trust and confidence on this thing because there is something that is back that is legal written. Gaskiya na mi jin dadi matuka musamman da farming da suka zo suna ciyan kayan mu na noma. Sabanin a baya gaskiya idan mun yi noma Maka iya kewa ka suwa ka mwata buchi badimi Amma ba ma saamu Yadda muchi suwa iru mwanda lo uchin na yanzu Anzo kwa mwanda lo uchin na yanzu Anzo kwa mwanda lo uchin Harka numa musamma alabasa Na numa alabasa tunsia Na jida di kuma simba da farak Yadda ma yadda ka suwa ta kese wa Ya, orang ya, ya tiap zaman orang hawa ini, ya tiap kawa, ya lina, kau ni dah licik sama dengan hawa ina. Ina saya ya lada tu tak faham dia biru ka, dia kau makan tak, dia ini faham. Asal kamu kau, mana kau ni dah cibaji. Alah biar nak dulu terlalu tunggu awak tak. Let the good thing continue. Let it not stop because already I think I'm, I happen to be the second cohort and we am already having this story to tell concerning how it has impacted me. Okay? I'm encouraging I'm encouraging that it should be a project that we continue. Indeed, young Africans we work. Put your hands together for Salau Nasir Gauna. You are welcome, sir. Make welcome also Al Haji Umar Kibia Usman. Al Haji Umar Kibia Usman is, a, is the president, Poultry Association of Nigeria, Kano Aspect. Put your hands together for Al Haji Umar. Make welcome. Abdul Kabiru Omoti, the branch manager of Union Bank in Kano here. Can you put your hands together for Abdul Kabiru Omoti as we have that representative on the stage? Thank you. Now, to anchor this very powerful representation is the business development officer of the Innovative Youth in Agriculture Project of the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture in the person of Mr. Abdusalam Mohammed Abdusalam. Put your hands together for him as you come forward. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I will hand over to Abdusalam. Thank you very much, uh, our Ibu MC. And uh, like he mentioned, we are going to be discussing agribusiness financing for youth and women, perceptions, prospects, and challenges. 
And uh, like he rightly mentioned also, to do justice and dissect this uh, topic, I have uh, my honorable panelists. You're all welcome. And uh, first of all, I would like each of the panelists to duly introduce themselves so that we know their antecedents proper. Thank you. Let me start with uh, Bank of Industry, please. Um, good morning to us all. My name is uh, Amin Yusuf. I'm with the state manager from Bank of Industry in charge of Kanu and uh, Jigawa State. Uh, basically, at Bank of Industry, we support uh, businesses with short-term, medium-term, and long-term loans and uh, for the acquisition of equipment and then for their working capital requirement. Thank you. Salam, executive, executive Director of Fine Foods Company, Nigeria Limited, representing the MD. The company is into production of animal feeds, training, agribusiness, is an outfit for agribusiness. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Samira Farouk. I am the executive director of Bichet Organic Farms. At Bichet Farms, we always think of our animals and human beings, our customers. And so everything that we do, we raise our animals purely natural, free from artificial enhancers and as well as antibiotics. I'm a business development service provider. And anytime you're looking at eating healthy, remember Bichet Farms. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nasser Salo. I'm the state Kano State Coordinator for Young Professional for Agricultural Development. Young Professional for Agricultural Development is a global network of young people that are involved in promoting agricultural value chain among young people. And uh, we do most of our activities online, and uh, we also use safe space to engage young people in capacity building uh, within the agricultural value chain. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Umar Kibia Usman, Chairman of Poultry Association of Nigeria, Kano. Poultry Association of Nigeria is an umbrella body for all poultry farmers in Kano, uh, feed millers, and the egg sellers and producers. So we have our office here in Kano, and we welcome any poultry farmer here who is going to poultry services to come into our office, so we capture him as an association member. Thank you. Thank you very much for this introduction. Like we are all aware, financing is the engine room for any business to thrive, either be it a startup or a, 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 an already existing business. The startup needs the finance to be able to kickstart their businesses and grow. While the existing business also need finance to expand their already existing businesses. However, finance has been a recurring decimal in terms of the challenges agribusinesses face, especially in Nigeria. We at IIT and other organizations also have been equipping youths and developing their capacities to be able to explore the agribusiness phase. However, assessing finance has always been a very, very difficult challenge. I would like to start with you, Bank of Industry. You mentioned that uh, you have uh, short and long-term loans and also machinery loans for the youths to Please give us an insight into these facilities. Okay, um, thank you very much for the question. So firstly, I would like to uh, thank uh, IITA for the invitation to participate in this panel. And then uh, secondly, we'd like to congratulate um, IITA and its partners for uh, training the youth because one of the issues we face as a financial institution is dealing with entrepreneurs that lack formal training to run businesses. So at the end of the day, when we provide them with finance, 
it is badly managed and the investment is lost. So congratulations to IIT, Mastercard Foundation, the beneficiaries and all the people that made it possible. So now to your question. At uh, Bank of Industry, how we provide uh, finance to uh, beneficiaries is if they have registered businesses with Corporate Affairs Commission. And according to the rules by the Central Bank of Nigeria, for any Naira going out, it has to be secured. So I'm careful with my choice of words. You would notice that I did not mention collateral. I said security. So for security, they need to provide certain types of security for them to be able to access a loan. So for loans between 1 million Naira to 10 million Naira, all they are expected to provide are two personal guarantors and then 10% equity contribution. Loans above 10 million Naira, you have to provide a collateral. And then loans above certain thresholds, we discuss on an acceptable security arrangement which is acceptable to the bank of industry. So some of the challenges which we face from onset, as I said in my opening remarks, are issues of documentation, entrepreneurial practices, and then understanding of the businesses themselves. So we are happy and I'm sure that and confident that any beneficiary from this particular cohort willing to access uh, funding from Bank of Industry, we find it very easy because I was watching the videos during the tea break. Most of them are registered with CAC. They understand that they have to have some form of value addition. They have to have some form of uh, packaging and their products need to be presentable to the market. So a combination of all of this is what makes the project successful. So that would be my response to you. Thank you very much. Uh, before I move on to the next uh, panelist, I still have a question for you. And you know agribusiness has its own peculiarities and needs. And there are certain types of loans that are agribusiness friendly. You didn't mention the interest rates, the moratorium, the tenure, because these are the key things that affect the agribusinesses. Okay, um, it's not that I did not mention them. It's deliberate because once you are dealing with first-time borrowers, you don't want to scare them with too much technicalities. If we mention too much technicalities, we are going to lose about 50% of our prospective beneficiaries in this room. So we prefer to leave the details when we are in the office. However, for the purpose of this gathering, I would want to inform you that the Bank of Industry has been evolving and has identified the opportunity in agribusiness. And that is the reason why in 2015, the bank started a cluster program which uh, focuses on an individual product. So far we have the rice product program, the wood product program, the adire product program, wood, and a host of other com commodities. So these are specialized loans where you just fill in the documentation and meet the security arrangement for you to access the loan. So typically, our loans, the tenor of the loans are between one up to six years, from one year to six years. And then the interest rate, because of the pandemic and the issues being faced in the economy, um, the interest rate has been slashed from 10% to 8% as we speak to you now. And then again, we have what we call the moratorium period because we understand these are new businesses, you will need time to stabilize. So there is a moratorium period of between six to 12 months. And during the moratorium period, all you are expected to service is the interest, while the principal will be serviced after the moratorium period. So, and I would like to give additional information to this gathering that apart from the uh, product program, the bank has some youth-centric products which we have entered into with our strategic partners. And one of the most successful is the BOI NYSC GEF scheme, which is an interest-free loan which we grant to coppers that are currently serving. It's for two million naira for them to start any business of their choice. 
Then we have the graduate entrepreneurship program, which is for graduates that have already graduated. They access up to five million naira. And then we have recently the Islamic Development Bank and the BOI are implementing a program which is known as the Brave Women Project. And I believe and I know some of your beneficiaries have applied to this program. So that is not a loan. That is a grant to business women. And the grant ranges from $1,000 to $15,000 for the micro category, while up to $50,000 for the SME firm. So I'm sure some of the beneficiaries must have applied because I was at a similar gathering with one of your partners, uh, the EDC, and we made presentations and we got very positive response because of the type of uh, training you've given to them. So these programs and many other specialized programs are what the Bank of Industry offers to you, but generally, for you to access a loan at BOI, you have to be registered, have to have some form of security to present, and you need to have a bankable business. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll certainly follow, with, follow up with you after this program. Uh, the representative of the MD Ultra Fine Foods, you mentioned that you are into inputs provisions. And all experts have agreed that uh, agribusiness financing does not involve money alone. It depends on the needs of these businesses. Some businesses just need input. Some people are able to buy their beds. All they need is what to feed these beds to point of maturity. Does your company have any package to support this type of maybe loan package so that they pay at the point of maturity? First of all, thank the MasterCard Foundation and IITA for all the programs. Uh, it so happened we are also partners in terms of training. We have trained uh, a large number of youth in how to prepare and formulate animal feed, especially the pets and including large animals. We have done so far, the company has a, a capacity of producing 150 metric tons per day. So you see, when we are talking about agribusiness, youth could not be left out. Uh, and I keep saying this, the problem now is not only uh, coming from the youth, because especially these youths have shown their commitment with the previous training we had. They have shown their commitment on how are they going to engage themselves in terms of going into agriculture. Uh, what they are liking in most cases is some technical know-how, which the IITA and uh, uh, MasterCard Foundation is providing now. But the main issue is the finance. We we'll all go back to finance. That is why I'm surprised my side microfinance bank is also not here. Because this is where you can have also small uh, loans up to three million, whether you have registered with corporate affairs commission or not. And at the same time, the interest rate is also single digits. So I'm surprised the microfinance bank is not here because they have been doing so much if you look at it. And I think Mr. President has given a directive this year, a 408 billion is going to be disposed for uh, agribusinesses and other related uh, business. So you see, from the training we had, a lot of them have shown willingness. We have taught them how to formulate it, to start a small business even at the backyard of their own houses, whereby they can formulate a formula of a feed and feed those animals to take them the extent of uh, maybe let's say five to seven weeks, whereby they can take out the beds and take them to to the market. This has been our practice uh, for quite a long time. I think we have been into this business for 15 years, and I'm happy to tell you the company is building a business hub, which is also a kind of uh, an acquisition center, whereby a lot of youth are going to be trained on different aspects of businesses, from, from land preparation to the market. Thank, also, you. Thank, you. Yes, thank you for that. Thank you. I think you should be thinking about this. 
like I mentioned earlier, it's, you are not meant to answer now. Do you have any future plans with uh, credit support in terms of input for these entrepreneurs, especially since you are vouching that they have been well trained and equipped with the technicalities to operate this business? You answer it later. Now for Poultry Association. As an umbrella body for all poultry producers in Kano states, what have you been doing in assisting your members in assessing agribusiness finance? What are the prospects and what are the challenges? Okay, good afternoon once again. On the issue of financing, uh, we is a strictly private business, that's for poultry. Most people in poultry business are strictly private. So most of them start up their businesses with the little capital they have. It goes in stages. We have the bucket farmers that operate at the homes. That is the women, the widows, the children who buy as low as 10 or uh, 20 number beds up to uh, 50, 100. That is, we call them bucket farms. These are from their savings. So it's not necessarily talking of finance force. People have to really start by learning how to save. In the 80s, I can remember, most of us that school in the southwestern part of Nigeria, there's a bank called Federal Savings Bank. Federal Savings Bank was involved in helping youths at primary stage to start saving for businesses, small scale businesses. These are the ones I'm talking about. Then we have the, low, uh, the, the lower level, that is those that have a thousand and above. They are outside the home, they are in the farms. These are uh, either in the cages or on the floor rearing. Most of them too, if you look at the, the census, most of them use their finances to run these businesses. It's high risk business, so you have to be very careful where you take loans from. If you are taking loans from high interest rates, when are you going to have your, uh, your payback period? Uh, how long is it going to take you? And then what risks are involved in the business itself? The birds in the farm, one little disease can bring, can bring you down from a million birds to zero. We have had instances of the bird flu, which has uh, totally removed people from businesses. And at the end of the day, they have not been able to go back to businesses. The reasons are being the support organizations have not been able to uh, finance them back to businesses. They have not been able to get finances from both the commercial and other banks, maybe micro banks, to go back into businesses because of the high rates. So most of them tend to close the farms and diversify into other businesses. Like I can see before we came into bed, a lot of people use the houses for, for onion storage and so many other things. We have over a thousand number of farmers in Kano. For, for, for poultry business. But the, the reason why most of them have not gotten back to business is finance and the high rates. The government over the years, three years ago, four years ago, introduced the school feeding program. I'm sure a lot of people are aware of it. Kano State government were uh, keyed into it as one of the states. And Kano State government used the association, that's Poultry Association of Nigeria Kano, to bring in their members to produce the eggs and then distribute to the schools. That is a way of grant, uh, giving guaranteed markets. These guaranteed markets as you produce, you have a market you're taking your, your products to. This has run for over four years and is continuing this year. The volume of students fed is over two million, almost two million. And if you look at the volume, 40,000 crates a week, that is a large volume. The Kano market cannot give you 40,000 a day. So if you move 40,000 crates within a short period of time, a lot of newcomers are guaranteed into the market. So, I continue. Okay. So, issue of financing, I think it's still where we are still going to go back to. Can we have a lot of people have get grants? Grants have helped a lot of farmers to develop and build the capacities in, uh, in, in the poultry industry. Thank so the Embroider Body Fund has been doing a wonderful job, trainings, seminars, and stakeholder meetings. Thank you.
Thank you. I'll still come back to you during your final words. You tell us. You said most of your members have gone out of business yeah. due to. You tell us what you are doing as an association to protect your members from such uh, challenges and how you are assisting them to come back up, especially in terms of financing. Uh, YPAD, you said you are a professional uh, platform for young people and you encourage young people to take opportunities in agricultural value chain. And for them to be able to take this opportunity, finance is very key. Can you please tell us your experience? Yeah, uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, in agriculture, the major problem young people face uh, is finance. And I think this is why this topic is very uh, interesting to discuss. Uh, young people face a lot of challenges in access to finance. Uh, because they are not prepared to assess finance. I think uh, earlier, during the opening remarks, one of the uh, speakers mentioned the first thing in agriculture goes beyond assessing finance. It's always connection to the market first. Connection to the market first. And uh, given the fact that agriculture has changed, from being a subsistence, uh, uh, subsistence engagement to a more commercial engagement. Now, agriculture is one of the uh, uh, largest source of revenue we have in Africa now. And if young people want to venture into agriculture without financial support, it's become challenging. It's become challenging because uh, the, uh, my fellow panelists from the bank, we see more about why there's challenges because young people do, are not having data-driven uh, entrepreneurship engagement. And iUth is providing the opportunity to empower young people now to have the capacity to engage in data-driven agriculture. Notwithstanding, young people still need to be engaged in uh, connecting with the market before assessing finance. And a lot of uh, uh, conditionalities are attached to assessing finance. Our experience with financial institutions uh, have been very challenging, especially when it comes to all these, uh, you call them security, and it's often called uh, collateral in the world, that's what we, the young people do not have the collateral to assess, especially startup. They don't have the collateral to assess finance, especially startup. Uh, established business who are ready for expansion do have opportunities to assess finance from financial institutions. But startups, young people who are starting agricultural business for the first time, have difficulties, especially because they need to have uh, business names registration. They need to have things like uh, a record of their entrepreneurship, like they need to have the record of businesses, the in inflow and outflow of income. And all these things makes it very challenging for young people to assess loans for startups. Thank you very much. Uh, so you mentioned that the youth are not prepared to assess finance. Yeah. And then those that are ready, the issues of collaterals and other technicalities in assessing this loan prevents them from assessing. Thank you very much. And uh, Hajia Samira, as an entrepreneur, have you tried to assess loan? And uh, what's your experience in this process? And if you have not, why? Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I stand on existing protocol. Earlier on, when I uh, came in, I was in my introduction, I said I'm a BDS, BDSP. In my experience as um, an entrepreneur and also a partner with um, IIT, I was able to coach some youth and women in terms of um, poultry, organic poultry production. And 
in terms of my feedback in what I got off, a lot of them are willing, they are engaged in wanting to do agriculture. But as it is, access to finance is a major hindrance for them. There's another group that we are overseeing here, we're not talking about, which is the PWD, people living with disabilities. And prior to my coaching in um, and the last year in IITA with the youth I did, there was no PWD amongst them. And they are people, they are their gender group that we need to consider in terms of agriculture because with research we've done, you have a lot of them that are actually doing agriculture, but there's no platform for them to be able to showcase what they're doing because there's no access to that market. Now, coming back to your question, as an entrepreneur, you always look at the environment. Like as I said, with the research that I did, with the youth and the women that I trained, because I had a batch that I trained for in my farm. I, I trained them on organic poultry production. I'm also a member of Poultry Association Nigeria. Now, in terms of access to finance, what we found out was that a lot of them are shying away from collecting, accessing loans. Because of two things. We have to look at our environment. This is a Muslim-based environment. And the issue of interest rates is an issue in the north. So and you don't have a lot of access to finance that are interest-free. All of them are willing to collect loans, but they want it to be done in the Islamic finance way. But we don't have that yet until recently, after um, the COVID pandemic came in that the government has come up with policies and um, uh, legislation at which uh, Muslims in the North can access finance interest free. But how many of them are aware of it? How many of these institutions that are doing this interest free, they are making it known to the youth and to the women? For me, I have benefited from the school feeding program as I'm a member of Poetry Association of uh, Nigeria. It doesn't involve me collecting it's just for you to supply the total number of eggs or chicken that your farm capacity can carry. So in terms, that's the major issue that I found out when I did the research. I found out that a lot of them are willing. Agriculture is a, it's a, it's a sector that is growing. So and sustainability is there. Once the, the students and, uh, sorry, the youth and the women have been trained on the right things to do, they are willing and they are ready to collect these goods. But that issue of interest is what is the major problem. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. So uh, one of the major challenges from what you identified is the interest aspect of the loans, especially in this part of the country. Yes. So this will bring me back to BUI and then we are rounding up. Can you please address our concerns, especially since you're operating in this environment? Do you have non-interest banking? And okay. then your final words, please. OK, so um, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for the um, question. So first of all, we have to understand that the fact that uh, we keep um, saying loans are not interest free and what have you want interest uh, islamic finance products yes they are islamic finance products but if you look at the modalities where and how the loans are implemented it is not far from that so what we do at bank of industry we don't just give you cash for you to do whatever you want or to finance your business at no point in time would you come in contact with the cash the items, the loans are for acquisition of essential items, which are usually equipment or primary raw materials. And the loan in question is towards the finance of those items. So in essence, if you look at the basic principle, the principle is purely on the asset. And the calculation of uh, the interest, you can also treat it as that of margin. Because if you access a loan today, we can amortize and tell you how much profit we are earning on that particular transaction of 3 million or 5 million naira uh, over, let's say, five years. And 
It is a rare cases where you see, uh, we, we, when we have issues that will get to restructure. So I don't want to get into too much technical details, but in essence, if your conscience or um, you are in doubt about get, um, get, being in contact with interest at Bank of Industry, you are safe from that. You are far, far, far from that because we are purchasing items in Naira from local suppliers or if they are foreign suppliers, we establish letters of credit for your foreign suppliers. And these are the basic principles which surround business transactions of Islamic uh, finance products like the Mudaraba uh, and what have you. So at Bank of Industry, you are guaranteed you are not going to get in contact with any of this. So it's just an issue of uh, nomenclature. We are a bank. We have to maintain that. Uh, but I can assure you are not getting in contact with any of the cash. It's purely based okay. on that asset. And then for... You have a question? Your final words? My final words is uh, to all the beneficiaries we have in the house, you are all welcome to the Bank of Industry. The office is located at uh, Plot 7, Guda Abdullahi Road Farm Center, after Country Mall or after Total Filling Station. It's there at Farm Center. You can't miss it. When you come to the office, let them know that you are a beneficiary of the iYouth program and we have made contact here and we are here for additional information. So please feel free to access this loans. Finance is readily available because last year we were one of the only African institutions to have raised a billion dollars in the international market. So the funds are there, but we need entrepreneurs like you that are trained for you to access them and make the necessary impact in our dear country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the representative of the MD of Ultrafine, answer my question and uh, your final words. Uh, you asked uh, a question on what future plan does the, com the, does the company have uh, for this youth. I would like to make it very vivid here that the board has approved, uh, as part of it is corporate social responsibility, to establish a, an acquisition center whereby more youth are going to be trained free. I would like to call on uh, IITA and tell them our doors are always open for discussions and for engagement of these youth to make sure that they have gotten something uh, to, to be doing. Then secondly, I would like to also let you know that the company has also has approved the five hectares of land to be cultivated and engage many youth so that they can learn a lot of things in terms of poultry and fishery. Then a consulting unit is also established already whereby these youths could be assisted in uh, writing of uh, bankable business plans so that we can show them how to write these business plans and make sure that uh, they, have, they can submit them to any financial institution and have access to finance. Then on a final note, we, as a company, we call for more collaboration with IITA and professional of private sectors to do more, to help these youth, to make sure that they are engaged, they can put uh, some food to the table for themselves. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Hajia Samira, can we have your final words? Um, my final words is for everybody here. First of all, for the um, sponsors, IITA, MasterCard, our youth. My recommendation is this. It will be very, very important that we establish business schools. After the trainees have been trained, there's going to be trained the trainers, which are the first batch of trained. They will be able to train others within their community. That way, knowledge is being cascaded down. Because that's the only way you'll be able to say you have actually done development strategies for these people in agriculture. That's number one. Number two, for the trainees that have been trained already. It is very, very important that you implement all that you have been trained. It's not just being trained and then keep it aside. You have to, even if you start small, you don't have to go big. 
you have to start small and gradually grow from there. And then thirdly, for all of us in the entire room here, it is not just for us to come and talk about all of these issues, all of these solutions, but for us to implement it as well as do monitoring and evaluation. With that way, we'll be able to at least evaluate and know the impact that we have made today and going forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, white part, please. My final words uh, will be to the beneficiaries of this uh, activity or the intervention. Uh, agriculture is evolving. The, the, we are living in the generation, the information generation, where young people need information on innovations in agriculture. And uh, with the aid of the internet, our handheld device, handset, laptops, we have access to information, global information, up-to-date information about innovations, new uh, uh, findings, research on improved method of agriculture across agricultural value chain, from cultivation, production, processing to marketing. There's a lot of information on the net. Young people should, have, uh, should use the social media as a platform to engage as agricultural entrepreneurs. There are a lot of information about new technologies, new innovations on platform. WIPAD, we have a platform where we engage with young people in Nigeria uh, on innovations, opportunities. You have experts in different fields of agriculture where you can ask questions. You have people who will mentor you on whichever area of agricultural value chain you are interested in. And, and, and lastly, uh, the digitization of agriculture is a new concept in agriculture. Using precision agriculture, young people have a lot of opportunity to contribute to the digitalization of agriculture. Now, drones are used in agricultural production. Uh, precision agriculture are being practiced in farm. So we cannot just All right. Thank you. rely Thank on the Digitalization old. is the key. Thank you. Digitalization is the key. Thank you. Poultry Association. So, uh, good afternoon once again. My call is for those who have benefited from this uh, training from IITA, we have an office at uh, Advanced Center, Bank of Agri first, uh, first floor. Take time to go there, be registered as a member, and be assured that if you're a member of Petro of Nigeria, you have a lot of things to benefit. Trainings are there. We can link you with markets. We can link you with all the veterinary doctors you see from down here to south that can give you advices on the way you take care of flock size, your birds, the kind of feed you're supposed to eat. The feed millers are also in the group. So all these things are, are there for you. But next is take full ownership of your business. Try to protect your birds. Insure them. Nike is there for insurance. And we are talking with other banks like Jai's and O Jai's Insurance to come in as support so that we have a way of insuring bets. Most people, when they go down, they find it hard to come up because they cannot put in more money into it again. So be rest assured that if you are with us, we will do all our best to see that we guide you the right way so that you sustain yourself and you build your capacity in the business you have taken upon yourself. Thank you. Now you are speaking like the umbrella body of poultry farmers. I would like to thank each and every one of you for making it here and sharing your opinions on agribusiness finance. And with this, we've come to the close of this session. We can engage them outside this so that uh, we take the opportunities they all presented here. Thank you very much.
My name is Peter Ragolachi, and I'm the ICT officer for the IEAT project. The IEAT project, like our name is, Innovative Youth in Agriculture Project. The first thing you want to think about when you get IEAT is innovation. And it's happy to say that we had the MasterCard country head this morning, she said, the plan is to reach 10 million Nigerian youths. We had the representative of the Emirates this morning, and he said, we need to be innovative about agriculture. We had the executive manager of the IUT this morning, and she said, we are looking out for different avenues towards making sure that agriculture is lucrative, is delightful, is fun filled, and it's inspiring for young people to venture in. During the um, panel session for finance, we had different institutes which came up here talk about how they are coming up with different innovations towards making agriculture, agribusiness, agritech very attractive. And that brings us to one point. Everybody is thinking about innovation. Hence, one way or the other, everybody is thinking about our youth. One way or the other, we are all focused on the same thing, jet towards the same goal, creating innovative youths that are passionate about agriculture, are willing to venture into agribusiness, are willing to do everything it takes, not because that is the only means, but that is a good means through which they can make earn a living, make a community better, make sure that Nigeria as a whole is alleviated from poverty. Partnering with BOI, we can actually provide that technical knowledge for any youth that wants to access their loans free of charge. Think about it. Nigeria to 111 million. Kano alone, being the second largest state in Nigeria, has 4.1 million people. Of that population, 45% are youths. If we are targeting just 10% of the 45%, we are having already about 200,000 people. What kind of Kano would we be having if 200,000 youths knew exactly what to do with respect to agritech, with respect to agribusiness, with respect to agricultural technologies. That kind of kernel is what our youth is bringing to you. Um, the lady who came around, the entrepreneur, she talked about people with disabilities. These people can learn via our platform because all they need is just internet. And after that, they are fine. From the comfort of their home, they can learn anything. While I leave you to ponder on this, to the screen to the left and the right, our platform, the, the URL to our platform, iuth.iita.org, is up. You can just access it, you can find out more, you can learn more, and at any point in time, you can become as certified as you are from your comfort zone. Thank you. together Mr. Peter Irachi. Yeah, Peter, we are proud of this platform. We've had people already benefiting from this very laudable uh, platform. So for our last panel discussion for today, hello, go. For the last panel an issue surrounding the ecosystem where businesses are in, both here in Kano and northern Nigeria, Nigeria and Africa at large. So
And uh, to do justice to this topic, you will cooperate with me as we make welcome the CEO, Rumbun Kifi Farms, in the person of Abu Bakr Sadiq Shehu. It's in our midst. Put your hands together for Abu Bakr Sadiq Shehu as he come up the high table. Keep clapping until you get up. Keep clapping. We just had lunch, so everybody has the energy to do that clap. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Secondly, make welcome Malam Deladi Matu. Is the branch manager, Nigeria Agricultural Insurance Corporation, Kano. Is here present in our midst. Put your hands together for Malam Deladi Matu as he comes up to the stage. Put your hands together. You see, it's not coming because you are not clapping. Thank you. I will also welcome Hajia Meiro Bello. Hajia Meiro Bello is the managing director, Adolescent Health and Information Project, AHIP. She is right in our midst. Let's put our hands together as we receive her up to the panel. I will make welcome Barista Mariam Jibril. Barista Mariam Jibril is a gender specialist and she's here to contribute actively on this fair as far as this conversation is concerned. So with a resounding applaud, make welcome Barista Mariam Jibril. To add further strength to this panel, I will seek your indulgence as we put our hands together for Dr. Aliu Yakubu. Dr. Aliu Yakubu is as well a gender specialist. He's right here in our midst. You can see him coming. So can you encourage him with a resounding applause as he comes up stage? Make welcome Dr. Mohammed Awal Abdullahi, who is agribusiness specialist from the Department of Agri Economics and Extension, Federal University, Duthi. It's right here in our midst. Put your hands together for Dr. Mohammed as he comes up. Now, to lead this powerful team in dissecting and treating this topic, make welcome Ms. Annabel Kamuche, all the way from NYSERT. She is here to spearhead this conversation. She's a lady and uh, contributing to the 70%. She's here to cheerlead this conversation. Put your hands together as we receive Annabel Kamuche. Thank you. You are not putting your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you very much and good afternoon, everybody. Um, I wish to stand on existing protocol and I would want in discussing this very interesting topic I have very interesting and powerful gentlemen and ladies who would give, make do justice to this topic I would want us to in one minute introduce ourselves what we do and um, we will take it up from there thank you so I will start from myself my name is Annabel Kamuche. I am the group MD of NISAT. NISAT is um, a group of companies with two subsidiaries. NISAT, in partnership with Ecosat of France, providing certification for exports. And then NISAT Expert Consulting, providing training and market linkages for people who are in the agricultural space. Thank you. I'll start from my mid right. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Abu Bakr Sadiq Shehu. I am the CEO of Rumbunki Bee Farms. Rumbunki Bee Farms is an ultra modern fish farm where we explore all value chains involved in African catfish. We've been able to partner with IITA in developing capacity in youth and women that are interested in aquaculture as a means of livelihood and as a means of solving the unemployment issue we have at hand. That's all. Thank you very much, Adja, please.
My name is Haji Ame Robello. I'm the founder of Adolescent Health and Information Project, formed over 30 years ago, and I've been doing youth development programs for over 30 years. And um, I'm a specialist in so many areas, so we'll see to that later. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I stand by the existing protocols. My name is Mariam Jibril. I'm a private legal practitioner and a gender specialist. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. Good afternoon, gentlemen and ladies. I'm Ali Yakubu from Amadi Bello University, Zaria, a resource person on gender-related matters. Thank you. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum all. My name is uh, Muhammad Awal Abdullahi. I am the coordinator agribusiness incubation center Federal University Duse. I'm also a lecturer in the Department of Agri Economics and Extension Duse. Um, I'm a lecturer and my specialization is agribusiness management. Thank you. Thank you very much, my able panelist. And um, I just want to introduce this topic again. It's enabling environment for youth and women in agribusiness, gender, opportunities, and market linkages. So I'll be asking each of you um, different questions as it relates to your areas of specialty so that we can you know, give as much information as possible to the people, to our audience, and they would have a lot of um, information to take away from this panel session. Thank you so much. So I will start with Dr. Mohammed. As an agribusiness specialist, can you enlighten us on the level of participation of women and youth in agribusiness? Thank you. A very interesting uh, topic of discussion. Um, you see, over time, most especially, let me talk about the northern part of the country. From time immemorial, uh, Agri has naturally created a niche for men and women separately. We can see that men are engaged in the strenuous activities when it comes to production, impute accusation, and the like while the female are mostly engaged in the local or primary processing activities over time. But with the advent of time, uh, the scenario started changing. And uh, one of the theme of this workshop is women engagement. I can see the, the target of the whole program is getting 70% women engagement in agriculture. I support that strongly because from my little experience, I traveled to other countries to, in pursuit of my studies. I've been in countries where women are greatly supported. And because of their own participation, their level of contribution in terms of GDP has tremendously improved and it has generally improved the general GDP of those countries. That is why I think this workshop is timely for us to understand the importance of women. You know, what is worth doing is worth doing well. And if you want to get it done right, give that task to a lady. I am in strongly support of that because they are careful, they are accountable, and they try to give us the best results as much as they can. So I would like to urge us and encourage us to continue giving them the support and enabling environment for them to be part and parcel in this drive. Because with their involvement, I want to believe we can achieve what we want to believe. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Now you have spoken about um, the challenges of having women play in this sector and how important it is to find ways of surmounting those challenges to ensure that we have 70% participation of women in the agribusiness space. So apart from um, playing in the processing where there are a few women right now, we are hoping that they will have women in the entire value chain from production all the way to processing and even the marketing and export of our agricultural products just like we have women playing in those spaces in other parts of the world. Now I would want to ask Barista Mariam, in your own opinion as a gender specialist, what are the challenges, if any, you think women might face and how do you think we would right now begin to handle those challenges so that it becomes attractive for our young women to become part of that 70% that we are hoping to see in the agri space? So basically, the basic challenge we are facing right now, maybe from the north side of the country, is lack of support. We have lack of support financially and the lack of skills too. And most of the time, the women keep complaining they are not getting support from their parents or husbands. So we need support from the parents, the husbands to support the women so that they can be productive in the society. And as it is now, a lot of women have come out of their shell. They are participating more in agriculture, unlike the former belief that women are meant for the house and kitchen. And the value of, of production here in Kano, basically, you see them in the farms, poultry, fishery, they are participating in almost all the aspects of agriculture. So I can say, I wouldn't say it's 50-50 with the men, but women are really coming out now, even if you look at the audience now. A lot of women are participating in agriculture. Thank you. So I, uh, I want to ask, what kind of support? What kind of support are you hoping that our parents and the men should give to the women to increase the number? so that in the coming year, we could see a 50-50 ratio of women to men in the agricultural space, especially in Kanu State, the North, and then in Nigeria generally. Well, basically, they complain of the financial support. They want to do it, but they don't have the financial support. Nobody supports them. But with institutions like the IITE, I think a lot of them are getting the supports now. They are getting the skills. And a lot of financial institutions now are partnering with the institutions to give them the financial supports. Thank, you very, much. Thank you very much. So I will go to Dr. Aliu. As a gender specialist yourself, what are the challenges that uh, you see that Can you hear me? Okay, what are the challenges that youth might face getting into the agricultural space or are facing for those who are already in this space? In this perspective, we can look at first the driving forces toward actualizing what is supposed to stand as the norms of this category of people aspiring to become uh, agripreneurs. Uh, the first thing that we should consider, what are the driving forces that should encourage these people to venture into this agribusiness? In the first place, we need to consider first the agency, the relations, and the structure that is available within which these kind of people should come on board to participate actively. When we say agency, we're talking about the kind of capacity to decide on what to do at which time that should be better off in life. Then when we look at the relations, 
that should come either horizontally or vertically, the, 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 the supporting services that can link up the agency alongside the structure. Because when we talk about the structure, we're talking about the institutions, the policies that are available that will serve as a driving force to make these people so active. Because when we look at what is happening, the agripreneurs in Nigeria today, when we look at the percentage, about 53.6% of the agri workforce is within the, within the female folk and the youth. But why are they not being considered? It's because they have been neglected for some reasons that this structure and the relations are not being very favorable for them to act or to participate in the system. But if all this can be addressed, definitely the participating percentage will continue to go high. Another factor that we always need to look at is the data base. Do we really have the data of these people that are actively engaging into this sector or not? Or are we just speculating or imagining this is the number we have and this is the number of people that have been participating in the agribusiness? So these are some of the things that we need to take into account to actually make us to make a better decision or policies for these people to have a favorable way of doing or engaging into this activity. Thank you very much. Now I would want to ask Mr. Abubakar, how do you think we can create an enabling environment for youth to participate favorably in agribusiness in Kano State, in the North, and in Nigeria generally? Hello? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for that question. As far as we are concerned, there has been increase in the rise of youth towards agribusiness and agriculture because of what the works that uh, organizations like IITA, Mastercard, and other institutions have tried to make it more attractive for the youth to engage in agribusiness. Uh, if you would ask me this question uh, three, four years ago, I wouldn't have been able to come up with an answer. Why? Because youth don't see agripreneurship as a social, uh, a, a social entity. In most cases, they think it's for economic purposes. So if you look at uh, any successful farmer, we have in Kano or the North, you consider that most of them are elderly people. In the sense, elderly people are the ones doing the work and therefore it's not attractive. So the only way we can make this attractive is changing the ideology of thinking farming is just hard work. You just need to go to the farm uh, under the sun and uh, do the manual labor. Now. Agriculture is more than that. Agriculture is all about adding value to products. And by adding value, ICT comes in, processing and packaging comes in, which enables youth to be more inclined to doing the after farm services. In the sense, uh, in rice farming, for example, most of the people are always buying uh, in most cases, the farms produce the paddy, and from there, the farmer is shortchanged. You can add value to that rice by taking it to processing companies and adding value, packaging, and distributing to uh, uh, chain stores. So if we are to enable the farmers with this, then entrepreneurship in agri is, should not only be innovative approaches to addressing poverty or food insecurity and developing emerging economies. It also considers means of unemployment for the rapidly increasing youth population in many developing economies. The challenge for entrepreneurs in agri is to innovate and spawn ideas and approaches to spur the agri production to meet future demand. This challenge is 
particularly targeted at unemployed youth. So if the unemployed youth do not see agriculture or entrepreneurship as a social entity, in most cases, we'll find ourselves losing, losing out. Thank you. So from what you have said now, yes. um, in general, what it means is that a lot of information needs to go out there to persuade young people yes. to get into agribusiness yes. and to see agribusiness as um, a good enterprise where they can improve their livelihood just like any other profession yes. and become who they want to be in the society. Yes. That is in, 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 in a words, nutshell yes, all that you have said. Yes, Thank you very much. Now, um, Aji Amero, how do you think how do you, what are the opportunities that are in the agribusiness um, space that these young people haven't seen? And because of your wealth of experience, you have been able to identify those areas. Um, thank you for asking me that question. But let me start first from the disadvantages of women in any society when it comes to matters that have been monetarized or that have values. To start with, agribusiness is not seen as a woman's job by the society because of the benefits, even from time. They live... Um, the vegetables, uh, the farming for uh, family nutri farming for family nutrition and all to women, that does not bring money, and they do not expect it to bring cash crop. Then, when it comes to cash crops, it is expected that the boys go to the farm with their parents to do whatever they need to do, and because the woman is not seen as a, 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 an, an economic builder or bringing anything valuable from the market. So that has transcended from that time to this time. And even when women are struggling to get into agriculture, it's becoming difficult because the space seems to be uh, uh, occupied and they are being edged out. Because if there are, there are farmlands in the family, as against the family giving it to the girl to farm, they would rather give it to the man. And that is a gender issue. Yeah. Not because she cannot farm or she cannot do it. Even processing, when it comes to being economi uh, 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 economically beneficial, it becomes a man's job. Sirte, you know what Sirte is? The founding of uh, 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 grains. When it was done manually by the women, the women will do it, but as soon as it became mechanized and you can do surfe with machines, it becomes a man's business. The women are set aside now. They have lost that business. Okay, so it's very interesting what the discussion that you are yes. having and the areas that you are, you are pointing out. So my question will be, how do we now consciously start to change the narratives? Is it going to be the policy of government? Is it like um, our father here? Are there things that the, the um, traditional heads can do that will help to begin to change this narrative? Somebody said reorientation is key. Yeah. Community reorientation. I won't say sensitization because a lot of them are sensitive. And we need to also build the capacity of women my, the first speaker there said agency. A lot of women lack agency. They don't have the capacity, they don't have the, even the notion of going and getting their own business to get it and take it out to, to, to utilize it. So they need that capacity. They need how to negotiate. They need how to know that these are things that you can build on relationships. They need to build skills that will help them form relationships. They need to build skills that will help them put structures in place. The informal society, uh, market now is like 30, 40, 50% of women, but nobody takes account of 
their production and brings it into the economy because they don't have structures. The same thing with loans. The BOI guy, that's Bank of uh, Industry, was talking about documentation. He was talking about structures. He was talking about having that agency and having prospects and building on security issues. If they don't have that and they are not empowered to get all those, they will never get to where we should be getting. Because the men have been or, or given that orientation that they can have loans, they can do that, they can build their agency, they can look, even when the extension workers go to the farm, they don't look for women farmers. They are looking for the men in the farms. So that is a gender issue also. So we need to change the narrative of who is a farmer. Because when you talk about a farmer, they will show you a man with a hoe. It's not a woman. And women have been farming from time immemorial, except that it is done in the backyard. And nobody knows about it. We can expand that backyard business to become an international business. And with technology, we can teach them. And because technology is not um, being seen as something that women should indulge in. A lot of women have cell phones, but all they do is call and chit chat mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. We should teach them how to use that technology. We should teach them how to do businesses mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. We should teach them how to market their products. Exactly. So that exactly. they too will be meeting uh, the, the requirements in the market. Fantastic. Fantastic, Ajamero. In fact, um, for every woman who is seated in this congregation, all that she has said is a challenge to us. And even to our father, the traditional ruler, it's also a challenge to the Emirates to ensure that policies are put in place that is inclusive for women who are in the agri sector or in agribusiness to strive. And for young people, it is now time for you to realize that agribusiness is something that you can do. And find a place that you are comfortable within the agricultural value chain to start making a difference. So it's not carrying an iPhone 13, 12, Corv, um, Samsung, and all of those things. It is because, uh, using what you have in terms of your phones and all of these things to get proper information on how you can grow your own agribusiness. Information in terms of production, of processing, and even marketing of your product, because you don't really have, some people in Lagos and other places actually market from their homes. And they use the handheld devices that people use to chit chat and do um, Facebook and Instagram, showing their fashionable clothes, to actually promote their product and people your product becomes visible not only within Nigeria and even outside of Nigeria so Ajia Mero has challenged us about challenges, we've spoken about opportunities, we've spoken about gender, we've spoken about creating an enabling environment for these people. The next question will be, when these opportunities are taken, when they go into agribusiness, as a young woman, as a young man, where are the market? Where do we link these people to? In terms of market opportunities, for these young people who are going to go into the sector. So I'll give you an example. In um, Kanu today, the Kanu state government has spent about um, 2.3 billion 
on infrastructure for the dry port, the Dala dry port. Can Kaduna State also has also spent a lot of money on the dry port. And I don't know if our young people know that there is what is called the F, um, AFCTA, which has now been signed by Nigeria and, and it, allows young, it allows people from other African countries to come and trade their products in Nigeria freely. What it now means is that if we don't take if we don't take opportunities and take, make good, if we don't make good use of the opportunities of the dry port that we have, what will happen is that other African countries will flood our market with their products. And our own product will still be here. We will not be able to get into any market because we don't understand their markets. And at the same time, we will not even be able to compete in Nigeria because, again, their own products will be of better quality, better standard than our own product in the shelves of Nigerian, um, Nigerian supermarkets. And we also know that Nigerians are crazy about imported goods. So even if this product is coming, if they have two products, one is made in Kano and another one is made in Ghana, the IQ of a normal basic average Nigerian is to buy the one from Ghana so that they have this, this thing that we are eating foreign food. How do we now intend to compete? Where are the markets for products that Nigeria has comparative advantage both within the African region and for export? How do we make this market accessible for our young people? Because that is, I'm sure that every young person wants to make dollar. They want to make forex. That is the quickest and easiest way to be able to um, um, prosper in the agri space. You should be able to sell within Nigeria and be able to export your product. So I would want us also to discuss in one minute, where are these market opportunities? How do we link these products to markets? What do the people need to know? in terms of information on where to target this product for export. Thank you. So we'll start um, with you, um, Mr. Well, uh, in this case, I would say that there's always opportunities for everyone. And uh, as we all know, you need a, f uh, a farm product every day. So, when, whenever we're teaching students or interns on how to start a business, we always try to tell them to identify their market, identify who would take off what you produce. So as long as you're producing something that is of value or you add value to a product, I think there is always market for it. So if you think uh, you're going to produce something and the mentality of bringing in foreign products to uh, substitute for ours, I don't think that mentality exists anymore. I hope, I hope not. Yeah, it I doesn't anymore. Because uh, you, if you check out, you see that we've, we are the largest producers of rice now. We export and we consume. There's no more consumption of foreign rice like before. So with the dollar, with the exchange rate and the pandemic, everybody is turning home to, to produce and consume. Thank you very much. Yeah. Adia Meru, please, um, one minute. Yes. I always tell people, even my students, when they were graduating now, that packaging and repackaging and always looking at your competitors what are those added ingredients or added uh, value they are adding to their product, supersede it, without adding too much cost. You can give varieties, you can package. The kind of packaging you do today, I gave them uh, instances of Milo, Bon Vita. Every day they are repackaging. They are not changing the ingredients. They are only repackaging and putting beautiful scenarios and maybe adding one or two non-expensive ingredients 
that will make you think they have improved that quality. And of course, you go for it. If you continue to look at quality control, quality control, repackaging, repackaging, you will move very far. And it's not like Nigeria does not have the market. We have the market. We have the market, but you have to be on your toes with your competitors. Thank Always. you so much. Thank you so much. So it is packaging, repackaging, ensuring that quality is met, ensuring that standards are also met, especially as it regards to global good practices. So Barista, Barista Miriam, one minute, please. in any business, every business in Kano State, first of all, you register your business. Then we have other institutions like the Kano State um, Chamber of Commerce and Industries and Mines and Agriculture, I mean. If you register with them, they link you up with major marketers on any products you have. As Antemiro has said, you only need to package your products well and they will market it for you. Thank, Thank you very much. Next, please. Okay. Uh, I will look at the market linkages from this perspective that the market is unlimited, but assessing the market from the other side is limited. You can find out that a farm produce will be ready for sale, but when a woman farmer wants to sell out this uh, palm produce, uh, she may be limited to a certain level of market. Because I see market in two different perspectives, high and low value markets. So women usually don't have access to the high value market because of the social norms surrounding and limiting their their participation in the agribusiness. So, uh, but for the men, I can say that they have a very unlimited opportunities to market linkages. So in this case, one really we want to uh, create more uh, market linkages to women, we can find a way of institutionalizing this market by government coming on board to create an enabling environment that will make this palm produce to this woman to be selling it to this institution for either uh, school feeding, uh, assistance, and other things like that, so that they will be encouraged to continue to, to participate in the agribusiness. Thank you. I, I don't know why women will not play in the high value market also. Why do you want to limit us to school feeding program? However, we hope to get to where the men are in terms of the market that they are able to get into. Because if we are in the same value chain, if we are in the same space, we should be given the same opportunity as the men. And that is what the innovation is all about. We are trying to break the barriers. Let's not, in trying to break the barrier, create an additional barrier to the barrier that we already have. Thank you very much. So next person, please. Okay. Thank you very much. Actually, I would like to um, call the attention of the moderator, please, uh, in case I go beyond the one minute, please, I, I need to send a message through. Actually, I want to uh, say something. Well, you see, in marketing, marketing alone, you know, if we look at it, it's so diverse, you understand? And people are saying that when you want to go into the market, there is collaboration what, uh, as what our earlier presenters made mention of. But how do we penetrate the market? I encourage my students in class. Every time I'm in the class, I tell them, think outside the box. Think outside the box. Exactly. Don't just limit yourselves to what we are discussing here. Think outside. You know, I want to say a rider on what Haji Amiro said. Hajia, do you know that there are women that are creating opportunities and they are breaking barriers in agribusiness in Nigeria? I happen to follow a lady 
they call her agri queen what agri queen is doing a lot of men of nowadays cannot do because of the level of involvement in terms of technological advancement in terms of marketing she is deploying in her business i bet you if you will count one to ten among our list of youth engaged in agriculture she would make the top five so already women are engaging the only thing is we need to like you said reorient them and let them know that these opportunities are abound to them let them grab it it's there grab it we need to encourage them to grab on these opportunities nobody is saying nobody has secluded anybody from these opportunities they are there it's only the wise ones that are going to pick them and another thing a rider to what one of our uh, uh, panelists is saying let me mention something here you see in marketing there's what we call branding there is customer loyalty all we need to do is develop our own brands what the what the foreign products have are already brands that are known create a local brand let it be in the market how does it penetrate the market in terms of what Haji is saying packaging value addition what is it that you can do that your competitors are not doing sometimes it's not in terms of pricing sometimes in terms of delivery how sustainable how reliable is your product in the yeah, market thank you thank you, you thank you very so, much thank you so yeah, much yeah this conversation is very ladies and gentlemen put your hands together for this explosive panel they are really doing something that is you know feel yes that 70 percent is achievable please I'm, I'm actually enlightened and educated today as far as women involvement in agriculture is concerned and i want you to put and celebrate this panel celebrate the moderator anel uh, for this for this uh, wonderful moderation thank you very much uh tola i will wish you come and take them a very very nice So there are questions we have had about the two panel sessions we've had. But before we give time for that question, I'll welcome our interpreter to briefly come and give us an interpretation of what were discussed. Then after him, straight up, Abdul Salam Mohammed will come up as well to lead us in finalizing on our business plans, response to the questions from these panel discussions. So put your hands together for the interpreter. Thank you very much. Jama, assalamu alaikum. Munsaur Arubaya Nedaga Mazona, Ku Masana, when the Sikh Zama could have you, Kuma Kamari and Akasora Abund the Sikapata. Uh, Sing you mana bayan in a ilin dama maki, the albarca de take a chicken aikum gona, San Nansen Tatone, ilum masalolin, the key beard and Nasorin, the Ike ESM, uh, Yoanchi, Munsor Arabayan, any daga, Masana, the Mutanam Banki, when the Skekula, the Haraka Tokudi, Domenda Abendaza, I say the Kudi, buying ilimi. To sing you bayani. Masala Taparko, the take the Alaka, the Harka Kudi, Kamari and the Nankalo, Kasachi, Tamusilmi, a Quaker got in a chair, a coach or Kudurua, one day one she the Harka Tabashi, Baka, Raba, Teda Magana or Kudurua. Do you want you and Nantana as a mamma's Allah in the Aka or my Kachi, the Gachi, my Katan Tambaya, did the Chiwaya put the shirt and the Ike Ebuja and Samuel and Chidaga Banki. Aya ima gana chua kana buka ater shedu gudabiu, da kuma kapung alik alami wa tu kasogo mana abenda kake ne mana bash, tu ama anyu masa tambaya akan chua mene ne lo kachinda ake tau kakang abia sana mene ne magana kudurua, tu beso ya anso nan tambaya basabu da kade rasa, wat anda kasu banking sedu mene maranchi, amari da gabai se mana magana chua lo kachimbi ambaya wujud shikara shida. Kuduluwa kuma ko kudir riba da ake dorawa anyanke shi daga kasogo mazuwa kasho takwas. 
to mun saurari irin wadannan dogayen bayanai wanda daga karshe abinda ake kokarin nuna wa mutane shine akwai albarka a aikin gona akwai daman maki a cikin sa akwai kasuwa wadda take jira kamar misali bayanan da muka saura bayanan da muka saurara daga mai harka noman kaji yayi bayanin cewa akwai kasuwa akwai maganar ciyar da ƴan makaranta wanda tana bukatar abinda ake samu daga harka kiwon kaji na kwai kenan bayanan da sun nuna cewa babu maganar asara yanzu a duk bangaren harkan noma da mutun ya dauka to matsalolin da aka tattauna suna da alaka da cewa akwai maganar cututtuka akwai maganar kalubale daga abokan cinikayya wanda wannan kusan yana daga cikin abin karshe da mazauna na biyu suka tattauna an kawo mafita ta irin wadannan matsaloli da aka tattauna wanda wadannan matsalolin wadannan mafutar ta hada da ka gane kasuwar da ya kamata ka kai kayan ka sannan ka kara wa kayan ka inganci domin si gogayya da kayan kowane sashi na duniya kamar yanda aka ba mu misali na cewa kai yake irin similo da sauran su su ne dai amma kullun canja musu yanayin mazubi ake yi domin si gogayya da wadanda ake kawa daga sauran kasashe sannan an kawo cewa mutun ya kula da suwaye abokan cin kayyarsa a kasuwar ko ko suwaye suke kawo irin kayan sa cikin kasuwannin mu domin ya zama yayi gogayya da su sai maganar da aka yi ta karshe wanda shine hadakar kasuwa wato a hada mutun da kasuwar da ta dace da shi yana da kyau yin wannan domin ka iya fitar da kayan ko ka iya noma kayan amma idan baka samu kasuwa ta kirki ba to sai ya zama riba ka ta ta kaita kamar yanda aka yi bayanin cewa mata sun fuskanta wannan kalubalan domin suna da iyaka suna da iya inda suke iya zuwa ba kamar ƴan uwan su maza ba wanda suke da daman maki da yawa moderator ta karshe wato shugaban zama ta karshe ta yi gargadi sosai ta kuma kalubalan ci maza cewa ya kamata a ba mata dama kamar yanda ake bayar maza dama domin dai a gudu tare a tsira tare a daga karshe wannan zama kusan abin da yasa a gaba shine yaya za a amfani da matasa domin canja ko domin rage talauci da rashin aikin yi a kasar mu Najeriya ta hanyar kulawa da inganta aikin noma wanda yanzu noma ya tashi daga karamar sana'a ko kuma sana'a ta cewa na gada amma noma ya zama ana yin sa ne yanzu domin riba ba kawai domin a ce ni manobi bane assalamu alaikum Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of you for showing up and staying to the end of the program. I'm here to discuss about our business plans and I'm assuring you that we have received a number of business plans and we have reviewed them. And I believe that you are already effecting corrections on those bps and taking into uh, consideration the recommendations and suggestions made in the reviews i'm assuring you that we have not rest our oars we are planning to soon organize a boot camp whereby we we'll clean the finalized reviewed bps and transition them to financing we will be inviting a number of partners including the banks especially sterling bank there and then we will assist you in meeting the requirements to assess the loan and transition you to financing whereby we will monitor the process of the loan application and ensure that you are able to assess finance and for those bps that are not up to the standard we will ensure that you are properly coached and mentored to develop a very good one so that you are also linked to financing lastly we hope that uh, you have taken advantage of this opportunity to network and take advantage of the different 
uh, actors that are here so that you'll be able to use them from today and henceforth to build your businesses. Finally, we appreciate you and we are telling you that we are awake to our responsibility to ensure that you are able to start and succeed in your business, especially with support, collaborations, and partnerships with the different actors in the agri-value chain, and also the traditional institutions. With this, I would like to end this section. Mr. Zakios will give you the final words. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I want to appreciate everyone, uh, royal fathers. We appreciate you for staying down at the end of this event. And for um, beneficiaries under the entrepreneurial track. So tomorrow is for the beneficiaries under employment track, the secondary school students, and the young farmers. So we appreciate you for coming today. Make sure before you leave here today, you make all the connections you need to do with all the stakeholders that are available. We will continue to interact with you from the Kano State Office of the Youth um, Project to follow up on the business plans like Abdul Salam has presented. So thank you very much for your patience. Thank you for saying to the end, we wish you a safe, return to your places of abode. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.